with the spoon. And your boy right in the south and back. Charges on the beach.
Okay, indeed, tune to Spoon, Spoon 107.5 FM, Spoon Radio, Spoon TV. This is where we, we bring you authentic information about all of the major happenings across Liberia. Here, we get to bring you face-to-face -face with the newspapers and uh, all the breaking news. The newsmakers get to break the news right here on this platform every single day. This place has turned out to be where Liberians from across the world gather every single day to get the news. And that's because Spoon Talk has absolutely no borders. Regardless of where you are in the world, you can always listen to or watch the program Spoon Talk. We are always streaming live across the internet on Spoon TV, Fabric TV, and Super TV. That's for Facebook. And for our YouTube audience, we are there at Spoon Talk Live. Thanks to the thousands of you across Liberia who always make up time to join us on the several radio frequencies that are always there relaying this program um, across the Spoon Network. We are live on um, Spoon FM 107.5. We're live on Fabric FM 101.1. And we're live on um, Super 95.5 FM. Uh, for the other radio stations across the country, we're live on Gibby FM 90.9. Thanks to Trend Radio 104.7 there in Grand Cru County for always relaying this program. Thanks to the team there in Bowman County. Of course, Trust FM is always making sure that the people in that part of the country are informed. Thanks to the folks in Central Liberia Premium Radio for always relaying Spoon Talk as well. My name is Nelson Collette. This is one edition of the Spoon Talk you can't afford to miss. Call somebody, tell somebody to tell another somebody to join us tonight because the train is about to take off. Let's uh, let's begin the show. Uh, kindly share the program as you come on tonight, because it's going to be very interesting. Um, let me welcome Mr. Dwalu. He's here in studio, always here, far ahead of time. Mr. Dwalu, I want to say welcome to the show tonight. Hey, Nelson, welcome as well. Welcome to the audience. Liberia today, Liberia tomorrow, Liberia forever. We have a duty to country, to God, but at the same token, we want you to invite somebody. Let's make this issue about Liberia. Let's call powwow every single evening and talk about the issue pertaining to our country. We do it without malice. There is no intention of any kind whatsoever to put anybody down, but to elevate this country. I understand sometimes there will be some hesitation. Some people will coil because the way we present the case, we are not going to be perfect. But we, what we do know is our intention is good. Our intention is to move this country forward in the right direction. Our intention, our intention is to bring dignity to this country, to the men and women of this country, so, so, so they too can enjoy their heritage. Once again, man, you're welcome plenty from across the country and across the world. Let's talk Liberia, always. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, thanks, Mr. Dwalu. Like you heard, you are welcome always. Uh, that's Mr. Dwalu for you. Mr. Dwalu and the people. <laughs> so uh, let's let's quickly do uh, a recap of uh, just uh, some of the major happenings in the country. I know uh, Mr. Dwalu is here. The CEO and the rest of the team will come on to give you details of all of those major happenings. Uh, but just a quick one. Um, there has been a protest. There's, there has been a protest going on in uh, um, uh, King Jaw, Grand Cape Mount County, mm -hmm. a serious one. Uh, there are reports coming from that part of the country that at least two persons have been reported dead. Uh, the folks there have been protesting uh, for some of the benefits uh, or, or some of these immunities they're, they're supposed to enjoy or benefit or get as residents of that county from the Mineral Development Agreement, the MDA. There has been a series of reasons for which the folks have been protesting. There have been images, footages uh, um, circulating on the social media, audio, uh, you know, coming from different parts of the place with respect to the ongoing protest. The CEO and the rest of the team, uh, Mr. Dwalu here, they're going to give you more details on that. I understand um, the government is concerned about that. Uh, the legislature has been uh, expressing some serious concerns about that. I understand there's some um, emergency meeting that's ongoing as well with respect to finding some sort of solution uh, to what the issues are there in Grand Cape Mount County. So uh, that's uh, big news is coming up. Of course, all of the details are going to be right here tonight on Spoon Talk. Um, on the flip side, lots of things have been happening in the country of recent. There has been a video circulating on the social media, uh, one of uh, the online 
um, media posted it where uh, uh, the vice, the, sorry, the president is seen in that video having a conversation with Alan White. Of course, the conversation was basically centered around the establishment of war and economic crimes court when Alan White is heard in the video pledging his uh, support commitment and all of that. And um, the president is, is equally hurt, saying that uh, they are going to make sure that those who committed heinous, heinous crimes against Liberians would get to bear the penalties uh, as a way of setting deterrence. Well, um, information is that um, presidential press secretary Kula Fofana uh, has spoken to that issue. She said it's not true, but other, uh, there are other reports coming out that uh, some fast checking has been going their own. Uh, relating to that video that, uh, and, and they are saying it's true. So there, there's conflicting report about that entire video. Uh, so that's something that maybe the, the team would throw more light on. Um, well, the uh, lawmaker of District 13, Montserrat County today have been having some real discussion. And one of the issues uh, he, he, talked, he spoke of today at the legislature, precisely the, the House of Representatives, at the session was the need to establish a clinic, a health facility at the legislature. According to him, uh, most of their colleagues have uh, come down with some sort of emergency. Uh, they've needed, they, they, the, their conditions have required some serious uh, or urgent medical attention. And most times you'll have to rush those people to the GFK. And, and yes, you never know. Uh, he cited uh, one instance with uh, Senator Vanny Sherman of Grand Cape Man County uh, when he, you know, collapsed and he had to be rushed at the GFK. So he has stressed the need for health facility at the uh, legislature so as to address issues uh, that lawmakers are faced with, especially the emergency situations, so that those issues can be addressed. Well, how, how we, we, we look forward to seeing how that goes. Well, there are uh, conflicting views. There are different um, views that folks have expressed since that uh, issue was uh, put forward. And a lot of other issues happening. Uh, former Senator of Lofa County, Senator Steve Zago, Mr. Zago, has been designated to serve at the LRS, the Liberia Immigration Service. Um, he went for confirmation hearing, and he has been assuring his former colleagues. I remember he was a senator. He's been assuring the sen senators today that uh, when confirmed by the Senate, he will make sure that the, the LRS, the Liberia Immigration Service, will be rebranded. That people who are non Liberians go through the proper channel, the, the procedure uh, in getting uh, whether the, the, the work permit or the different, um, let's say, immigration documents that they're supposed to get, that the system will not be the business as usual. Plus, lots of other things happening. I don't want to hold Mr. Dwalu uh, sitting for a very long time. So, Mr. Dwalu, I give it back to you. Yes, and no, say no. There's a lot on the plate tonight. Like like we said, try and share the show. Come in, let's talk Liberia. But before we do that, let's recognize some of our people. I'm actually going to start with the YouTubers because they keep saying we forget them. Yeah. I see Quantum uh, Fort. How you doing, Mr. Fort? Welcome to the show. Aretha Momo, how you doing, my sister? What's going on? Joseph Sarko. Mr. Sarko, welcome to the show. And, and, you know, you guys share the show, Precious Satya, Elizana Mbaba, welcome to the show, with Thompson, Ayo Freeman, uh, Edward Bolton, Matthew Dennis, Henry Flampour, Mr. Flampour, welcome to the show, I see Myers Montego, welcome Queen, welcome, I see Emily Fumula, I see Amos Carr, Jerry Zemio, welcome to the show, I see Joshua Momolu, Mr. Momolu, welcome to the show. I see Charles Clark, Mr. Clark Yata Sumo, Pearl Campbell, Thomas Gato Jui. How are you doing, Mr. Gato Jui? I see Mary Flomo, I see Dorian Young, Rachel Prow, William Winning, um, Visa Gawe, Armstrong Y. Binder, Mr. Binder, how are you doing? I see Texla Jalaju. How are you, Larry Lewis? Mr. Lewis, how are you doing, sir? I see Mary Finna Yema, Kalu, uh, Esther Zuo, Madam Zuo, how are you doing, Faith Ameris Yates? How are you, Stasi Scott, 
Rainy Sendo, welcome to the show. Whatever you're watching from from across the globe, but most especially here in Liberia, we want to welcome you from across the the, the country. Be it in Zoe Drew, in my beloved Grand Bassa County, uh, whether you're calling, whether you're watching from Ganta, Nima County, Vonjima, Kakata, across this country. It is about Liberia. Edward Kessley, Mr. Kessley, welcome to the show. Over here, I see Deacon T. D. Davis, Madam Davis. How are you doing? Lawrence Gay, uh, Teofilus Yuma Power, I uh, see Phoebe Warity, Fatu Amen, Luther Nupa, how are you doing? Abu B. Kamara, Dominic Doyan, uh, Daniel Samson, Henry Masale, everybody, man. Let's come and talk about Liberia. There's a lot to talk about. We will continue to push this issue. But last night, if you allow me two seconds, then no, see, I want to talk about this issue very briefly. Mm. I was going through the thread. There's a tendency of mine. Whenever I leave the show, I tend to go back and watch the show all over if I can, if I do have the time, to make sure I get it right, to make sure I do whatever I'm doing to do it right. And as I was going through the thread, and there was a comment that said, Dwalu is full of it. He wants 100,000 jobs in Liberia. I have to say he's never created a single job. My message on the Spoon Network is to bring hope. It's a hopefully put forth a vision, and a vision with the intention to change the conditions in this country. I don't have a magic wand that I'm going to wave and things are going to change. Every society, there were men and women in that society with a vision. That vision was meant to inspire people, inspire our leadership, so they can put forth a policy that's going to transform this country. Now, the comment went on to say 100,000 jobs is, is, is impossible to be done in Liberia. Let me say this to you. We have approximately 2.7 million Liberians that are of working age. Let me repeat. Approximately 2.7 million Liberians that are of working age. Of those <laughs> it's less than 5%. Less than 3% is 100,000. If we cannot create 100,000 jobs in this country and you think it's a far-fetched idea, I don't know what you think of, of a vision. The vision of the great uh, companies you see across the globe, they did not start with the expectation that they will have thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of employees. All of us flock to Facebook and we, we write things on Facebook. I believe Facebook has close to, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 2.5 or 3 billion subscribers into Facebook initially. Mark Zuckerberg, it was something he did in his college dorm. My vision for Liberia has to begin somewhere. The, the, the intent that we do have, because I sincerely believe this is more than possible, because I know we are more than capable of having that vision realized here in Liberia. It has to start from somewhere. You're not going to create 100,000 jobs in one day, but you have to start somewhere. It starts with Sis Kalu having a hair braiding store that is being funded through the Liberian Diaspora Corporation or through an entity that is promoting private entrepreneurship across this country that is promoting Liberian enterprise. This is a vision, uh, a vision that is focused on our small farmers, how we can take their goods to market across this, across, across the globe. That is the vision, a vision where we can have a collaboration where we're diaspora Liberians, the home-based Liberians, and they can funnel money here, and we can set up entities across this country to build small factories, small businesses across the country and create thousands of jobs. That is the vision, a vision where we can expand the fishing industry and come and build hubs across our coastal cities 350 miles of them that's the vision that vision you may think is too far-fetched you may think it's impossible let me tell you something if we do not think big for liberia like ellen johnson salif said if your dreams do not scare you they're not big enough we have to make our dream big for liberia because liberia is mightier than you will ever imagine my question to you is what is your vision for this country don't take dualu's vision Implore another vision that we can follow, but let that vision transform our country. Let that vision transform our country. I don't have the solutions, but if I prefer a solution, no solution is going to come perfect. It's going to be tweaked along the way. There will be adjustment. Let's make this adjustment together. I don't want you to just nitpick. I want you to present an alternative for my country, for your country, so we can change the condition of this country. That is what I'm. That is what I care about. So we can change this condition and bring dignity and honor to the Liberian family. This is what I dream about every single day because I know it's possible. You may think I'm saying this because I just want to say this. For the last five years, this is all I talk about. 
I have countless videos when I ran my Sunday show on the drive with me and Josh Lobo on, on the closing argument here on Spoon Network. I've promoted this issue because I believe the viability of our country has to start from Liberians themselves. And we must push the issue to the private enterprise, an enterprise that's going to truly transform this country. It is possible, young man. Don't doubt this. I don't want you to have any doubt. Because if you doubt, we cannot make it. I don't just want you to critique. I want you to proffer another solution that is possible, plausible in this life area. Because if we do that, we can transform Sesto City into a bustling metropolis. We can turn the likes of Ganta into the envy of the region. This is my dream. And we can make a place of Bonjima, where we all want to go. And the great Sesto River can be something we access. There's a dream here, folks. And it's possible. Don't doubt this. Dr. Francine, welcome to the show. Dwalu and Nelson, you're hello. Good good. Today. Yes. Uh, good evening, Dr. Richardson. That's uh, good. Uh, it's good to see you again. Yes, it's good to be here. Dwalu, excellent message. Um, I would love for someone to come and join you. And, and talk about creating jobs. Don't just take Dwalu's suggestion like he said. Proffer your own suggestion. I think the more great ideas we can have, we can energize the private sector and create more jobs. It's not about criticism. We don't have time for that. Uh, Liberia is way back. We are behind. We need every idea. And the more that we have, the better we can decipher and, and put the best one for it. So yeah. Dr. I agree with you. You have your voice, your ideas, your time, your thought process. People don't realize the energy it takes. <laughs> we got the one idea. <laughs> All of ideas. You know, Dr. I used to think when I was first started working professionally, I would come in and I'd be tired. And I'd be like, I don't understand why I'm tired. I'm not pushing nothing. I'm not, you know, really. anything heavy. But it's like even today, you go into meetings, you have to think, you have to understand how to put sentences together because you, you're talking professionally to people. Thank you move you. from place to the other, you're advising students, you hear in one uh, student's uh, perspective. And so it is dreamy, it's mentally dreamy. So I ask people who, um, it's, we, it, it's no longer the time to criticize. And constructive criticism is good, but you're just going to say jobs are not going to be created while you're not going to create jobs. Yeah, that's not constructive. Doesn't help anybody. Give up yeah, the it, ideas, yeah. you know. Say, you know, this is why I think jobs cannot be created in X amount of days. This is why I think. What are you thinking? What makes you think that Dwalu cannot create jobs? <laughs> you know, just by looking at him because he's wearing black today. No, it's it's not. It's not the reason. It's not talking about little T-shirt, Doctor Francine. And, and, and Doctor Francine, you're right. What people don't realize is. When you come on the show, you will spend on average two, three hours a day reading just to come here and make sense. Yeah. Now, I, I keep reminding you, Tom, when Dr. Fenson says something about a subject, it is impossible to cover every single angle on that subject. Just because she left it out doesn't mean she agrees or disagrees with it. It's just because it was not touched. So if I say, for instance, we can create a massive amount of jobs in Bapulu County. Oh, try to talk about Bapulu. Riverside County is a better place. You don't know. I get it. Guys, take the totality of the issue. Let's address this together. And the Dr. Francis said, look, criticize. I want you to criticize me. I love the threat. But when you are criticizing, I want you to do this. It got doubt for a very long time. There's another thing people will always say, oh, do I don't think he knows all. Now, people now one day I will kind of say I know all. If I if I knew all, I would not be searching. But if what I say make you feel less than a man, it comes from a man a lot of times. That's your business. I can't help you. I'm not going to diminish myself so you can feel bigger. That's your problem. My issue here is to bring a message. And if that message is not something you like, let's talk about it. But at the end of the day, it has to move the country forward. A lot of us, Dr. Francine, support the Honorable Commons, for example. I support the Honorable Black Abdullah because I believe he could transform my country. Vice versa, the same thing with Dr. Francine. If Honorable Black Abdullah, President Black Abdullah now, is not going in the direction, when I say something, it is not criticism against him. It's a criticism of an action that is taking that I, I believe is Thank you. It is about a, Look, let's stop the deification of our leaders. It doesn't mean you go after them, but if they make a decision that is wrong and we don't say anything about it, the country suffers. Yes. 
it, 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 we have to get out of this rat where but while you supported the man now you don't start critiquing look if people are shooting people in king Joe, under this administration and there is no justifiable reason for that i don't want that for my country nope that no, you don't want that. It doesn't represent us well at all internationally. It does not. We want a better Liberia. Anything about shooting, protesting, the international eyes are watching us so keenly, especially now. So we really, really don't want that. Um, so, you know, I we, we expect you guys to criticize us. You know, I'm actually used to that. <laughs> it's so, expected. Yes, yes, but you're right, bro. I mean, before we come on the show, we have you know our jobs, full time jobs, so you have to you know make sure that you're aware, you're abreast, you have to put your thick critical thinking cap on, you got to stop whatever you're doing right now. I'm in between, I'm actually cooking a bacon chicken for my family. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm I'm up a little bit. yes, you know, it, it, it you know, and, and then I, I was at work today, so it's crazy. But I wanted to share something. You don't guess what I've got? I got a, a summon to go to. So jury duty, this is how when infrastructure yes. is when it's in concert with other things, when it's, it works well, you know, when you why you need infrastructure. So the people can just sit in the courthouse and send me a postcard. Thank okay. You. And the postcard says you are summoned to serve as a juror on X amount of date. Your yeah. term of service is one week or one trial. Okay. I don't have any decision making in this process. I can't be be shy and say I don't want to go. This is right. my civic duty, okay, yep. to this country to serve any to anyone in this country who meets certain requirements can serve as a a, a juror. All right. So now they asked me to I thought this was so interesting. They yep. know they have transgressed. When I was years ago I used to get like a letter in the mail that I have to respond to. So they're telling me that I have to go online and complete a form. All right. And on this form, I have to list, you know, where I live, my address to make right, sure it's the right district. Okay. And then they send me an email confirming. I mean, actually, it's an email and a text message. Can you see technology working? The yeah. infrastructure, the importance of energy, electricity. If these people didn't have this in this country, there's no way they'll be able to do these processes. Like the court process wouldn't be able to work efficient and effectively, not perfectly efficient and effectively all right and so, I, and so now they're saying okay i responded they responded to me they gave me a number that i have to call the night before i go to serve jury duty um to make sure that the case is still on to make sure that i meet the qualification because what they based on how i answer they're going yeah. to make sure that i'm not biased that I can go to trial that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of sound mind and I'm yeah. of my peer that they're yeah. going to, they're going to put me on the right case. So this little post notes, I'm keeping it because the number is on it. The night before, which happens to be a Sunday, the case, the, the day that I'm scheduled is a Monday, I have to call in and I have yeah. to tell them, you know, they're going to tell me through a voicemail, come in, we are needed. Or no, you are not needed. We'll schedule you for the next year. Hopefully, that's the message I want to hear because because, <laughs> because actually, when you go to this is your civic duty, you get paid. I get paid six dollars, which is Correct. not yeah. The government pays you. They will send me a check Correct. for the amount of days if I'm sequestered or if I have to go to trial for one week, or you know they'll pay me six dollars for one week. I'm acting. I don't want to get paid because I get paid more than six dollars per day. This is thank so you. So, but back to finishing. Yes. This, this is how democracy works. I want you guys to read Larry Larry Putu's comments. He's making mm -hmm. some great points. And I love the, the numbers you're adding to that, Larry. Thank you so much. I love the contribution. But that's a funny thing. What you just display, it, it speaks to the participation of that democracy. For that democracy to work, we all have to play our part in it, even to the point where sometimes you got to get forced yes. into participating in the democracy yeah. because it has to work. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, a king waved mm -hmm. a wand to execute this person, and yeah. there was nobody else to decide. In Liberia, when we talk about participation, this is what we are talking about. All we all got to do our small part. Yeah. Our small part. Honorable Baka alone, President Baka alone cannot do this alone. If you're in Bapalu County, you got to do your small part. Democracy cannot work in the absence of the lack of participation by this population. 
Everybody got to partake in it. And we got to continue to force this issue, my people. We have to push the issue, the issue of innovation in this country, the issue of strategizing different policies that's going to move this country forward is what I lay up all night thinking about. Because the solutions will not come from one location. And the more solutions we hang here, the more we do that. But I want to say this to somebody who was making an argument. One of my brothers, I'm not going to say his name. They said, oh, the guy stays so long in Liberia and that, that, that job. Let me tell you something. A wise man does not fight for glory alone. Let me repeat. I think a wise man said that once. A wise man does not fight for glory alone. Let me tell you the reason why people support political candidates, because they believe in the vision. And they, they, they attach their own personal vision Thank you. <laughs> now, it is. So you, you want a certain Liberia. You fight for that Liberia. You want to partake in the formulation of that new Liberia that you envisage. Because if you don't do that, and if you don't believe anybody can push your vision forward. I want you to dream Liberia. I want you to love this country. And I want you to live this country. And the way we can truly do this is empowering. Liberians to compete on an equal footing with foreigners in our own country. This is what I want and surpass them. Let me tell you something. There is nowhere else that you can go on this earth where the citizens of that country are subordinated to foreigners that come to the country. Our only country is Liberia. My vision, how do we change that around? To do economic empowerment. Forceful economic empowerment. This is the only way. This is the only way it's been done everywhere else in the world. We have to think innovatively on and around. Because if we don't do that, we can't change this place for us and our children. Da? Yeah, and I, I wanted to, you know, talk about the progression. You know, like I always say, countries like human beings were not born or see what's born in your mouth. It's a progression. You know, yeah. when I first started getting notification for jury duty, there was no text messaging. There was no email for me to, to get. It was maybe a letter that came in the mail. I had to respond by sending a letter back. But you see, the people's service have progressed. They have innovative ideas. They have asked for new people, new thinking, uh, moving with the time. And this is where we want. This is how you know your country is progressing when people are moving with the time. And so this is this is uh, something that we need to talk about. We'll come here and we'll talk about that. Um, exposure gives you a lot of ideas. Yep. Um, interaction of other people, not necessarily, you don't have to be exposed by living like Liberia, but interaction, talking to Dwalu, listening to Spoon, you know, reading books, attending yep. different events. Like I saw the new library was just open, learning center was just open. It exposes you, okay? Um, and, and so when it exposes you, your, 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 your thought process should be, how can I give back to my country? That's why we're yep. here. This is why I've been here. A lot of people say, oh, Dr. Richard, why have you, this is why I've been here for three years. You know, Dwell, I was just thinking, you know, um, Don Lemon got paid billions of dollars, I believe, for his recent lawsuit, actually a million, million of dollars for his recent lawsuit. But CNN is still going on, right? There was legality involved. Every, every single day. Exactly. But, but the media, the media yeah. shifts the, the thinking. It shifts everything societally. Look, socially, the media is massive. You know, I used to laugh at people say, Twilight, why would you go on spoon? I'm like, exactly. oh my God, how can you not understand the reach of this? Exactly. How? That's a first thing. There's not a single corner that I go in like where people don't know me. I I'd be shocked. I and, and and for me, you know, yes, you're right. And for me, who love privacy is is very it's, it's it's, Oh, talk about me. Let me get you some beer. I said, my man, I don't drink. Okay, my man, the, the fish on me. And I love that because yeah. people appreciate people what you do. Yes. Yes. It doesn't mean everybody's going to agree with you, but yes. if we're going to yes. move this country in front, hey, my people, yes. man, the info I'm talking about, y'all will get very meal because this is not something that I just started talking about almost over 15 years ago. And people don't know this. <laughs> I actually went back to school. And got a master's degree in innovation strategy because I was thinking about Liberia. How do I transform this country? Everything is so, yes, I can have a concentration in innovation and strategy because the country has to change in a way where, <laughs> look, that the friends, the opportunities here are so limitless, it's so numerous to the point where you don't have to do much to transform this country. 
No. When you see it, it's say, oh, you don't understand the country. Let me tell you, the country is not hard to decipher. Come here. Let's put the money in the right places and see if these men and women go to work that we don't truly transform this country. And, and come, so, and example, come on, example, it's Rwanda. Rwanda was transformed in like 10, 15 years. 20 years, yes. Okay. It's a middle income country. Exactly. So and imagine with the global smallness, the global un unity that we have these days. Okay. Before you can say, okay, before the industrialization, people had to get on a, a boat and travel for 30 days to hit the United States. Now all of us can go through these different uh, devices. So you can transform, you can move so quickly if you put your political willpower and your mindset and your resources to, to that transformation. But if you don't do that, you know, everybody just in their own slumber or everybody in their own greed, you know, everybody wants that what's in it for me. It's, it's going to be hard. Well, somebody texted me about you, Dr. Francine. They were like, I was listening to Spoon last night and Dr. Francine said, if somebody's in a position, if they're not producing, they shouldn't be there. So I responded, I said, so what, what, what's wrong with that? Uh, but in, in Liberia, the people job, you can't take people job for an Jeff because I'm like, how do you counter this? How do you counter this? So you want to sit down in the child protective office of the, the Ministry of Gender. While little children are being raped, there is no matrix to determine how you curb this rape. How what's your strategy to counter this rape? But you must just be there taking free paycheck. No. No I'm corporate not. entity will keep you. Nowhere in the world. <laughs> well, when you talk here, they say you hate the person. That's absolutely it has nothing to do with hate, my people. Move our country forward. Thank you. That's what I ask. That's what I ask. And if that ask angers you, you're normal. But I'll keep asking it because there's no other way around it. Like, we're going to move in from it. Just in from small. We're not here for a long time, my people. Look, mm -hmm. somebody said, wait, Edward, are you in La bro? I say in La bro. This week, don't say my full money yet. <laughs> don't say my full money. But guess what? Actually, next week, actually, next week, I'll actually be in Southern Africa. So I will be out of Liberia. Oh, you see that? I yeah. will be in Southern Africa next weekend. And you know, and Santa, the wealth will be with me. So you will be. <laughs> so stay to I stay in Liberia. I'm actually in the studio. I'm in Liberia. And, and you know, but we got to continue our boot. Look, that's the first thing. We got to put boot on the ground. I don't want my presence to leave Liberia. It's hard yeah. to say because Dr. Francine, I want seminars now for young people at the universities. Okay. I want to have these seminars and let them know, say, listen, this is the way you're supposed to think about, uh, about how you treat your spouse or how you move a small business because you have to shift the orientation. Even in America, they're still having these massive seminars that sometimes someone would not pay for the seminars and things say, you just get the idea. Ideas are very expensive to come by. We have to fund them. And we have to introduce them into Bapulu County. We have by to. Fire by force. Center. Boom breaker. Monrovia is not Liberia. We can't hear you. Center. They still muted. Okay. No, I won't. I'm grateful that we're having a wonderful show. It's good to see you. And now you're going to get my sister involved. Uh, I have a, a lot of different information concerning you in Liberia. Oh. Uh, they, they, some are good and some are bad. But we were bringing Nelson. Come back, Nelson. Nelson. We're bringing the good. We're bringing the good because Nelson. you know you, you men of when we you 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 so passionate when you like me when you talk about Liberia like I want to share tears. Yeah, and that's what I see in you, Eduardo. Apart from the joke, we can laugh. Yeah, at that. you. I agree. You love your country so badly, and you wish well for your country, and mm -hmm. you know and. Um, I don't know whether it's early to be disappointed. No, I think it's early. But, but I want Liberians to hear us. It is not about an individual. It is not about a politician. It's about Liberia that we all will fight for continuously. And that's how I see you. Job or no job, you will fight. You know, because you work so hard and you earn your living, you and your family, and we are grateful to God for you guys. I hope we can have a, more, more Liberians in that direction than for us to play politics. I, I, 
I'm happy that we're going to have the former ambassador, the former Senator John Ballou, Jr. He will be coming. But this situation about Grand Cape Mount, what is happening to our people? What is happening to the country? What is happening when you fight for the change? And we're going to get into it, but do I do? Mm. This thing been boring. This Grand mm -hmm. Cape Man issue, Western Cluster issue. Mm -hmm. Now I received a whole document from uh, the citizen of Bapodu County. They're about to hit the street. I received a document from some folks in Monrovia talking about LDC. They're about to protest. Do I do? If you say protest a good thing, why would you why you want to wait for protests if you can try to solve the people problem now? Why you want to wait for protests? Why why you can just set a committee? Like I, I heard Yombri set in a committee. I thank God for Fonati Kofa. He set up a committee. You know, a back and forth texting the senator of one of the senators of uh, Grand. Grand Cape Man, Deba, Deba Babla, you know, she's on her way. She was there. She said, Stanton, I'm on my way. It's like another hour away. She's on the battlefront. But, <laughs> I mean, what's the plan? So, no, let me, can I come in? I, I, don't, 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 you, you need to, I, I want to share tears because our country, man, I was our country, the country called Liberia. We love to see things tip over before we be proactive. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but talk to me, Dwalu. And Stan's not going to kill me for this. Sorry for Carter. It's been a while, Mama. I didn't move you. I come in by my Jew. But let me say this, Stanton. We, 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 we center everything in the counties, in all the counties around the senators and representatives and around the government officials. You made a comment. You say, well, why do we wait until things are about to boil over before we attach, we, we address them all when the people get in the street? This is the reason why. Nobody sets up any preventive measure of an institutional organization to preempt issues before they actually happen across the counties. Everything is centered around the senator. Senators will literally take money that belong to the county to go and do project because they want to claim glory for that project. Even though a senator's job has absolutely nothing to do with the, 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 the provision of projects in, the, in these counties. Instead of you localizing the addressing of problems, this is why I'm vehemently opposed to people that superintendents being appointed by the president or local mayors being appointed by, because the mayors and the superintendents must be beholden to the people whom they serve in the local counties. But we don't do that. The problem will always be because a senator in Morovia is actually divorced from the conditions in the local counties. So when something happens and the senator now runs back to the county, he or she cannot address that problem because they are not living the conditions of the problem. We have to localize the big word, indigenous, the solutions to our problem in the local counties. No, you live in was it Trenton, New Jersey? Where do you live, Stanton? No, I, I do not live in Trenton. I live. Okay, in you New live in New Jersey. Jersey. Which part of Jersey? My mentality. No, no, no. I'm in New Jersey. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I was sorry, 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 New Jersey. Thank you, Lawrenceville. It's a rich area, for in example. Brazil. All the rich people. Wait, I already googled the houses you just, in Lawrenceville. You just used an example. You just used an example. The houses in Lawrenceville, no house costs less than eight hundred thousand United States dollars. So that rich people living there, my people, I will lie to you. Now, the area over there, I can guarantee you. Every single decision, including the police, the local firemen, the school board, everything is localized. The people make the local decision. State government, national government has little influence on how the local school district is structured, how the police is structured. In Liberia, everything is divorced from the county. It is centered in Morovia, and the people believe they are beholden to the president that appoints them. He or she is not beholden to the local people. We can't solve problems that way. 
It's a, it's a foundation of our problem because we're now localizing the solutions to that problem. And I think that's where we are coming from. So, Eduardo, again, you know, uh, the, the, the former ambassador, a former senator will be joining us at uh, 9.30 Liberian time. That will be 4.30 our time. So let's do this talking in the next seven minutes and we'll bring in, uh, we're going to speak to folks from Grand Cape Mount County, the, some of the, those citizens. Uh, people die. Three, three individual pass. ERU you shooting. We got videos. What in the world? People are wounded. Honor the rescue authority, honor the rescue train, honor the rescue team. It's rescue time. Yeah. Say what you want to say. It's rescue time. You want rescue clock. It's rescue time. And all the people are asking for, for something so simple. 12 years. Deba Island been in that place for 12 years. They say you have never treated us right. And Dwayne, let me say something to you. If I'm correct, everyone that ran in that place end up losing. They lost the election. That's the right. every representative and the senator Vanish Shema. Mm -hmm. Sima Tudor is about to run in 2029. Who knows whether he will win? The people rejected them all. Go run for his job. Deba Vabala won on these conditions. The other representative won with the same issue. This company is destroying our country. Absolutely. This company is killing our people. The people now start looking for gold that diamond is getting 13 million every day. They're getting out of the country. And we use our own police people, our own army people to kill the people. Amen. Like, you, you know, let us say this thing. Wherever you find yourself, this is not about, I, I love this person, I hate the person. This is the fact. This is where we need to be Liberian. Dr. Richardson, the people just asking for one thing. I hope anybody can get to Deba Allen. The people say we don't want him. He must resign. 12 years, he's been working alone, the company and the people. The people say, you are treating us bad. The same thing we talk about LDC, tell the people hit the street. And maybe they'll call Gregory Coleman or such putting police on the street. The same thing with the University of Liberia. The children can go to school. Tell they hit the street. Why should we wait? for protests before we solve the people problem. Why? That only protest can make us to move. I heard that the president had an emergency cabinet meeting. Minister Lensman, the justice minister and other individual, Gregor Coma and his people, more open investigation. The first investigation we're waiting for, we can't get it. The army wife took on the street. Guess what happened? They say investigation on the 12th, on the 12th of February to today, 17 days and counting. Mm. We got a report for that investigation yet. Yeah, but you need a part of the investigation. Your first investigation. I would inaugurate. The inaugural six hundred and fifty thousand investigation on our Miata family. We see nothing yet. Okay. Are we going to go with the draw? We are investigation over and over. Is this the new pattern? Mm. Are the people serious that they will call for the investigation and they will tell the Liberian people what's happening? Investigation on Miata family that caused the president to faint, caused people to die. We don't have no result of Miata Family investigation. Investigation on the Amis wife hitting the street. The president said in two weeks, in two weeks. And we'll play what the president said. We'll play it. He said in two weeks. It's been 17 days. When see report yet? Investigation will look into LDC why there's the country is so dark, nothing. Hmm. 
open NSA audit, open CBL audit, nothing. Report that we look into the training position to see whether it's legitimate. We're still waiting. Report that, yes, indeed, we're going to open another investigation in Grand Cape Man Vla. We're going right back to Mount Ellie and Joe. We are time. So where are we, our fellow Liberians? Let's speak truth to power. It will be a very interesting program today. We still get two more minutes. Dr. Richardson, you want to say something? I've seen the ambassador in the back. Yes, I'm very concerned about what is happening in Cape Mount. Cape Mount is where my parents, my father went to school there. My grandfather is from Cape Mount, Robinsport specifically. So anytime a Cape Mountian dies because of negligence on our government's part, it worries me. It concerns me. It is such a beautiful place. I wish, Dwalu, please make a visit while you're there before you come back. I'm sure Stanton will go there one I've day. been there a few times already. But yes. I mean, when you enter a Cape Mount, you see the mountains, the lake, the greenery. That is a place where we shouldn't have sad stories coming from. It should be a success story, the story of beauty. The story paradise. of paradise, correct. The Atlantic City, the mountains meeting each other, a story of a wonderland. But here we are talking about how legislative or legislature are not going to have investigation uh, that will take forever and we may not even know the end result of the investigation. What happened to the executive branch? What happened about enforcing laws? Why, again, I think Santa said, do we have to wait until something happens? I remember there was a, a, a dealer was on the floor saying that B Mountain didn't meet the obligation of even building a medical facility for the people there. Not too long ago, he was asking these questions. Why should they extend the MDA contract when they had not lived up to their obligations? And the people are fighting for better homes. They are taking 13, if I hear heard you correctly, Stanton, close to millions of dollars out of Liberia. Gold is not, it's not cheap, it's expensive. And here it is, we, those people are getting crumbs. Cape is one of the least developed counties, I will tell you that. But yet and still, we are getting goals out. If you go to Cape, it's a dead town. It's a completely dead town, but it could be rich. And so it saddens me. I hope that this is not about a legislative reason. It is on the rescue watch. Let me just tell you that these people die. It is on the rescue watch that people are protesting. And so get evoke your legislative power, your legislative exercises and duties to stop what is happening in Cape Mount. Uh, we're going to be bringing in the former ambassador, former senator of Maryland County, uh, former ambassador, uh, represented Liberia very well. We're going to be bringing in uh, His Excellency, His Honor, uh, our own regular, so regular for the words. And uh, he always pressing the on spoon when we call him the Ambassador John A. Balut Jr. Uh, we want mm -hmm. to be grateful to you, regular for the words. And uh, you always press. Hey, Ambassador, you got you listen to something. Can you please uh, turn it down? We're getting a feedback in the and, system. Uh, you always hey, Ambassador, you got you listen to something. Can you All please? Right. It looks like you got to. No, I'm not. We're getting a feedback. Yeah, you got to get out and come back in, probably. Uh, I think you have uh, the double screen open. Hey, Ambassador, you got can, can you please? Yeah, get out and come back in, please. Okay. Yes, please. All right. So, uh, so to, 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 to where Dr. Richardson left out, uh, while we bring in the ambassador, Nelson, I'm sending this stuff, please upload them for us, please. To, to all of them, it, it, it's time to just be realistic in what we say and what we do. Uh, I hate to be a politician and just take inside. I'm not a politician. The Labyrinth people want to see something. They want to hear something. That's why they report these things. Dwaru. What are we here when you talk about Kipma? The same thing was happening to Bomi. We beat on Eden Snow. We beat on Vanny Shema. In Grand Kipma, they fired the three representatives. In Grand Kipma, they fired the other uh, senator. They brought in Deba. They went in to fire Simon Tedo again if he doesn't perform well and bring in somebody in 2029. Are these people blind, Dwalu? Are they blind? Stinson, um, 
I think Liberians, not just, look, I, I'm a mistake that when President Weah came to power for the very first two years, I never criticized him because I wanted him to get his feet wet. Um, and I do understand to some degree what Honorable Buaka, President Buaka has inherited. I understand it. And, and to some extent, the difficulties associated with that. But I'm going to say there as well. The people in Grand Cayman County, they are no different from the people of Liberia. I think their cup is running over. Liberians are beginning to realize. So listen, if we continue to fold our hands and allow people to come to I'm our sorry, county. I think, I'm sorry, I think the ambassador is okay now. Back. Yep. Ambassador, can you say something? Can you hear us? Yes, hello to everybody. Good, you're super, you're good. Thank you very much, thank you. It's good to have you, sir. It's good to have you on Spoon Talk this evening. As always, you, oh, whenever you. we call on you, you, you avail yourself and you want to help Liberians understand where we are as a nation. So again, welcome to Spoon Talk. Uh, let us have a great conversation tonight. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's nice to see you all again. It's been a while. I think the last time I was here was uh, during campaign time. Yeah. And uh, let me take this opportunity to congratulate the Spoon Network for your very strategic role you play in making this uh, unity party victory, you know, led by President Buaka and Vice President Kum possible. And let me single you out, Mr. Witherspoon, for your particular stance, perseverance, persistence in holding your ground and making sure that the Liberian people were heard despite all of the uh, state uh, machineries and attempts to muffle the press. I think you stood up and I uh, can't thank you enough. And before I conclude, let me also thank and congratulate you for the Spoon Network for some of your, your panelists that were invited to serve the country in the new government. Uh, please extend on my behalf my congratulations to them. Thank you. Well, again, we, we, we are so humble and we say thank you, Dr. Richardson, Mr. Duaru. The rest of the team just appreciate the fact that we fought uh, a good fight. We hope we can make it better by what we do here for the next six years. It is important not only winning the battle, uh, but the, the, the struggle continues and we hope we can deliver for Liberians home and abroad. As always, Ambassador Bado Jr., thank you for joining Spoon. Let's get into it. Do you have anything as to say as your intro before we hit you with all of our questions tonight, sir. Yes, I mean, before we go into a long laundry list, permit me to just start my introduction with something dear to my heart that we've been working on in recent times. Um, you know, we have an organization called We The People and we've started this new administration running working on the issue of illicit drugs in this country. I mean, for me, there's a lot of issues in the country, illicit drugs remain paramount. So we started working on that. We convened meetings with our network of anti-drug uh, campaigners and organizations. We've had a series of meetings. We've now compiled um, a list of recommendations to the government. We are having a meeting planned for tomorrow to meet with uh, the DEA new leadership led by um, Director Kroma. And so this is something that uh, we have to fight on. I know you're all passionate about politics. I know we're all passionate because at the end of the day, everything boils down to politics. The very issue of drugs is an issue of bad governance, boils down to politics. But while we deal with that fundamental, all important issue of politics, there are some very pressing and urgent issues that need our attention because the kids are dying by the day. Drug overdose. You don't hear about them because they are not in the formal sector. All in these ghettos, they are throwing these kids out every night, killed. They, they're just dying from overdose. And you have a handful of few people bringing in the drugs in this country, getting rich, making the rest of us look like fools, destroying our children, destroying our future. They live large, they buy homes every day. And 90% of them are not even from this country. And the worst thing about it is that we know who they are. 
We know where they live. We know what they do. They've been arrested before. So let me single out uh, Director Chroma right now with his new team, including uh, one of your own, for this uh, robust approach to, to dealing with this thing head on. They've made a series of arrests. I mean, one of the very famous importers and dealers have been brought down to his knees. The signal is out there now. I think all of us need to join in. And so we are going to move up. I just want to say this clearly from the president down to the, to the, to the DEA, that this is dear to our hearts. This is what we campaign on. This is what we fought for. This is what we are sure the young people are. We hold it very dear to our hearts and we're gonna fight until we find it solved. And so I wanna throw this challenge out to you, Mr. Witherspoon and your team, your Spoon Network, to please dedicate an entire show to this uh, drug issue, the illicit drugs. And we have a lot of kids, organizations who are themselves former users, who are, are today working with us to show where these guys are and what they are doing and how to get rid. They themselves are willing to go out there, going to schools, organizations that led to the to the the the, 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 the drug law passage. They are all willing to be wanting to be heard. We need to open the lines and let the public call in where they have ghettos in the communities. The last discussion we had with the DEA was at, amounted to about 1,000 ghettos in this country. And our children are dying. And so I want to throw this challenge out to you to, to please consider that. i show unique the, the, the dedicated to drugs. And then we call in, and everybody call in and share the experience, what's happening with the DEA, who's taking drugs here, who's passing. Just throw it out. Just throw it out and let everybody hear. Let it chip for what it may. The people themselves want to be part of it. I think your platform can create that platform for them, that opportunity that we can all share in it. In the meantime, before we go to the next uh, thing that I'm sure you have your own thing to discuss, I just want to draw the attention of the public. Today, we have a new government that is committed to fighting these drugs. Today, we have a new DEA leadership that is committed, demonstrated, they dem uh, committed. So the public themselves will need to play a part. We need to cooperate with the DEA. The DEA need to put in the hotline. The people need to call and expose all these things. We need to, to form this partnership. The DEA just has about a few hundred uh, officers, but we have millions of people in this country, and we will not be cowered into our little shells by more than by maybe 20 or 30 persons who think they can paralyze our country by bringing illicit drugs in this country. We have meetings with their people, and sometimes call a spade a spade. We, the people, had a meeting with the Nigerian ambassador. And I said to him, Mr. Ambassador, we owe Nigeria a lot. You guys were here for us during the air mob days. During the, 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 the on men, you sacrificed a lot. We owe Nigeria a lot. But it's also very uh, alarming to see that 90% or plus, the mass majority of these importers are Nigerians and they're destroying this country. So your embassy, your government has a role to play. You don't want to create a kind of a xenophobic environment here that people are now starting to attack Nigerians. That's not what we want. But we want to protect our own. And we will protect our own. And if we start to go after certain people, it shouldn't look like we're witch hunting. But it has to be brought to an end. So we, in that, he was very polite, very understanding. He only asked that we you know, deal with this thing well, and we, we cooperated with him. Today, he has offered, because I asked him if the DEA of Nigeria can help our DEA, considering that they know their people, they know how they operate. And so he said, well, if that request is made, that can be considered. That is one of our recommendations to the new DEA today, so that they can form partnership, international partner, just not just with money, but with technical partnership. People who have more experience in dealing with these hardcore criminals. So on this note, I just want to thank all these uh, anti-drug campaigners that have been working with us. And thank you for this opportunity. And please take very seriously my request and appeal that you open your show dedicated to drugs and let the people be heard. Let the parents who see their children walking in the street like zombies be heard. Let the kids who are taking these drugs and want to leave, but they can't because they are trapped. Let them be heard. Let those who are part of this thing and manage to escape, let them tell their stories of how many of the police have died and they've seen them dying before them and they couldn't do anything about it. 
Let these rehab centers come in. Let the whole situation be brought to light. That's the only way we can deal with it. It has to be holistically dealt with. And because you are so strategically placed in this country as the most widespread and, and mostly listened to and most uh, uh, progressive conglomerate or news entities, I think you have a God-given role to play. And I just want to assign this. Well, thank you for this. And I think we can move on to the next level. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I spoke with uh, uh, my dear friend, A.B. Kremaya and myself had a long conversation today. Uh, that's why I'm wondering whether he, he he spoke to you concerning our own conversation. He, he I mean, he's very, very determined to fight to the end. Uh, the issue of a budget, we understand that 26 million plus almost in the budget. I know he have not received a dime from the government yet uh, because there was no budget out there. So we'll wait and see the issue of our partners around the world willing to help. These are the things on his mind. Thank God we can announce that his deputies went for confirmation of Fadika and the other gentlemen. And by God's grace, they will be confirmed. And he's trying to put these things together. The building, the offices, the manpower across the border. I mean, it's a lot on his plate. So you being involved is great for our country. And I think everything you just said is what he told me. And he's asking every Liberian, home and abroad, please allow us to raise some money, between 100 to 250,000 to enable us to start a fight, not only with the government, because the government is broke right now. So we had a long conversation. I cannot say it all, but I think he's passionate. And just what you said, exactly what he told me. And I think we should work in that direction to help our country. You know, talking about the rehab center, the Delon rehab center, that which was built by Minister of Youth and Sport, if they do have any, and even more to come, you know, folks like that to Richardson and other mental health experts that want to go to library and get involved in helping to rehabilitate our brothers and sisters that are on drugs. You know, that those are some of the things AB and myself discussed today. So thank you for sharing it, and we will avail ourselves and avail the network to help any which way. And so let me just add, in addition to all that you've said, you know, right now he's going after um, these dealers, these importers, because he's trying to cut the source. But again, I'm sure uh, uh, Dr. Richardson might probably tell you that people who are dependent on these things, you cut the source without dealing with them, you have another social problem. And so like yesterday, we need to start raiding these ghettos, getting these kids from these ghettos and putting them into rehab. And since government has this big plan of building this uh, huge uh, um, rehab, that's, that's beautiful, all beautiful, but that's not now. We need a solution like yesterday. So some of our recommendations is like to form a partnership right now, call a meeting with the churches, okay, the private sector, those find out how many existing uh, rehab centers there are right now, and let the government subsidize them. Let's put in budget and start to feed these guys directly into these networks, these existing rehab. Right now you have a 20 rehab in the country that people don't know of, and they are just barely struggling on their own. They need to be supported, like yesterday with budgetary support, and let them start to absorb the kids off the street while we go after them. And the big, big institutions like the Catholic Church that has schools that we all want to, hospitals that we all want to, they have the experience of organizing this kind of a social uh, infrastructure uh, program. So let the Catholic Church, let's partner with them. Let's deal with the Don Bosco. Let's deal with the Catholic Church. Let's ask them that they can handle a rehab. Let's outsource the whole rehabilitation issue to the private sector. That way government can readily monitor it. Let's deal with the Methodist Church. Let's deal with the Episcopal Church. Let's deal with all of these things, the, the Islamic groupings. There were all of these religious groupings that already have or that could very well fit in the gap. I think we need to start thinking outside the box. Government can do it. We need to outsource them. It needs to raid the ghettos, take the suppliers out, take these uh, users out and send these users directly to the rehab. And this rehab will have to be the existing rehab. You have to work with what you have until you can get what you want. Time is not on our side. We have an opportunity today with a responsible government, meaning well, well many government that has the intention of solving this problem. I think time shouldn't be our limitation. We should be creative enough to find a solution right now, 
even as we plan for the future. So with the budget that he's spoken of, with the budget that they need, yes, government itself with the limitations cannot solve it all, but government has to take the first step. And we will try to take the first step in, in like, like the, this government is doing. The private sector, the international um, donors who want to come in will be very much welcome. But if we don't get them the tools, if we don't get them the requirements, they won't perform miracles. Fighting drugs is a very tough issue. I think the fact that they brought down one of these, uh, I've called him Japan or whatever, and the fact that he's brought to his knees is now behind bars, and almost 20 of them, today the people know that it's a different day. And not only A.B. Kroma and the DEA, these drug dealers and pushers must know that the Liberian people are mobilized. That's why I'm standing up. That's why we're working with all the network of these anti-drug organizations. That's why we're engaging. And that's why I'm asking you to take that challenge. And I thank you for, so much for already accepting as we look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Again, welcome to the show. We want to say thank you for joining us. Let's get into the other issue concerning today, those trending issues. Ambassador John Balgenio, you fought a good fight, like we said. Let me ask you, the condition right now from Grand Cape Mar, you've been following the news. We can go up, we can show you the videos, people dying. Uh, our own people killing our own people, to be blunt. Uh, they are in different chat rooms. Well, gave us time. Ambassador, with this our government why are we where we are when you're talking about grand kipma and the current protest that led to three deaths so many injured well what's happening in grand Cape mount is pretty much what happens when these plantations like for example in my own place maryland we used to hear the crc crc and uh, workers tracks you know Mining areas, concessions, like plantations, be it or palm or rubber or whatever agricultural project, they are people based. They are land based. They have a lot of social components in work in their operation. And human beings are social beings. They have to be carefully managed within an investment area where they have amassed the land of the people, the tribal lands of the people, the tribal people are displaced and these kind of things. You know, you would not have that kind of problem in Cape Mount about Orange. Orange probably has a, a, a station there maybe with three or four persons working there because they're dealing with high tech. You would not have that with the MTN. We never had that kind of issue with Maryland, with MTN or Orange. They're high tech, they follow their signals and they have the antenna. But with the issues like the CRC, the MOPP, that villages have been displaced, that land, thousands of acres of land, of the people land. And so they feel entitled and they feel, and correctly so, they deserve a certain respect and consideration. Now, problems like this boil down to leadership. And I said it in my time, and I will say it today. The company shouldn't have to be dealing with demonstrations and strikes. These are investors who come to invest in the country. If there are issues, the government should be proactive enough to go in there and resolve these issues that they have with the local workers, the population, and the tribal people. Where the government fails to play their part that's where the people take the law into their hands and the investors are there to do business. They don't have the security force to fight, to protect. They're not what they're there for. So it boils down when government has failed to take action. And this is about leadership. Unfortunately, in this case, um, whatever that has accumulated today didn't start a month ago. So it, it's really not the lack of leadership that's demonstrated on this side. It is a cumulative effect of neglect by government in the past of not addressing the issues of the concerns of the people. And when you see a new government like this, they take this opportunity, they seize this opportunity 
to deal with it because they feel that they can be they can have redress now and so that's what they're doing and don't forget we're just on the elections the other half of the people that lost the election and trying to make it difficult for you they will not play with easy plantation politics black like concession politics politics is a very important part in the operations there they have people who spark it to make the place ungovernable, to put, the, to put pressure on government. So government has to be proactive. They have to go in there, take measures. And once this is resolved, you now have to insert a certain up, uh, uh, protocol. If the citizens have problems, the workers have problems, there's a place to seek redress. And from this, get to government, government has to solve it. Because if they don't solve it, the people will solve it the way they know best. And when they start to act, the concessions are going out of work for three, four, five days. And these things cost millions of dollars for people operation. And if you, you have concessions of investors constantly trying to deal with strike actions, this is not the best attraction for, for further investment in the country. So everything boils down to the failure of government to, 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 to get involved and solve these problems. And so the George we have CDC government definitely failed in this regard. And so today we are having to deal with the mess that they created. But it doesn't have to be that way. The Unity Party government now with Joseph Yumambwaka can be very proactive, very assertive, go in there. They will be given the opportunity because they were not heard before. They didn't intervene before. But once the people trust you now and allow you to intervene, take that real strong measures in calling a spade a spade and let the citizens of these people feel the respect they deserve and the rights that they should be granted. Again, these concessions are multi-million dollar concessions. They all have the government behind them. Mind you, problem I have with most of these concessions, and I'm not speaking with B Mountain, I don't know the, the, the direct situation here, I'm just speaking general terms. What they do not allow in the country, they try to do it here sometimes. And we shouldn't that God allow that. We should protect our people. Government, first and foremost, is to protect the people, even as you mediate this situation. So the people should be assured that government is there to protect their interests and let the, 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 the government mediate and hear from both sides and try to resolve it. I'm sure there's a solution. Where there's a will, there is a way. Oh, I, I will ask my second question. We're bringing Duaru, Dr. Richard Sings, uh, Glenny, and then uh, when the rest of the team join us, uh, then they will ask their question. I understand that you will not go into deep with this government because since the 22nd, we bought at least 27 days to go since President Barker put his hand up. But I want to take it back since November 17, 18, when President, the outgoing President George Mana, we are conceded. Leadership started then for Jose Yuma Barker. Though is one person at the time, but we had an incoming president that we all know that was setting up his cabinet, setting up his government. We have the transitional period. People talk about different clusters. And up to now, what we know, the clusters report, they have not been delivered or read to the president yet because he's very, very busy with appointments. If you go into these cluster report, you will see exactly what we are talking about today, uh, uh, Ambassador, is that these things, you know, should have informed the decision of the president and the leadership, uh, both the legislature and you talk about the Senate and the representative uh, uh, side. So when we go back to George Manor, we are and say, well, is George Manor, we have problem. Uh, don't you think that's the reason why they remove George Manor, we are for us to solve this problem? Case in point, let me show you something real quick. Uh, then we can go into it. Let me play this video. Uh, viewer description is advised. Please, I'm begging you guys. Uh, it's up to you if you want to watch to be very simple. Uh, if we wish anywhere that is so bad, we'll just take it up. But, folks, watch this video. <laughs> Okay, we cannot show it, you know, too much, but again, people die. Uh, we get to report that a two, three year old baby died. We understand that for this same reason, the people of Grand Cape Mount removed the three representatives, brought a new representative. 
remove one of the senator that was on the that was on the ballot, brought in Deba, waiting to remove the next senator if possible, if he doesn't perform well. The president is informed. The people overwhelmingly voted for President Boyka. You were there, you were fighting, you were not a stranger to this thing. Ambassador, with 27 days, man, you think we forgot the people of Grand Cape Man? You think we have turned our back on them? We couldn't prevent these things from happening? No, uh, no, I don't think you forgot Cape Mount. You see, again, like you said, you had a, a long period, I mean, a couple of months now to you know, put our act together. For some reason, things have stalled, and that has caused some embarrassment because you didn't have the full government you know, to have hands on to address these issues. But be as it may, it has happened today. Um, the reaction to that, again, I can't speak with absolute certainty because I don't have all the facts before me, but to have some people die during this thing is, is something that we all have to regret and nobody can, can justify it. I mean, there, there has to be a way to first start meeting with the leadership of these people and then approach to solving this problem. But I guess, like I said, it complicated, it went out of hand, things happen. My sympathy to the people of Cape Mount. I know this thing, I've seen it in Maryland over and over. And when I said that it is the accumulated effect of neglect of government, especially the past government, since we are just into this government, I'm not trying to shit blame. I'm the person who never shit blame. I don't, I take off from where we are and we'll move forward. You are here now, you solve the problem. I never shit blame. During my time, it was our unity party government and we failed to mediate effectively in these issues. People had to take the law into their hands. And when the government doesn't interfere and uh, intervene properly, politicians take advantage of this. And that's why we call plantation politics. They play with it and they come and showcase that they're there. We have a case in Maryland, someone who was micro-rating, oh, the government has to go, this, this uh, uh, CRC has to go, it has to go. When the CDC came to power that he was part of, never spoke one day against it. All of the people complains, they remain mute. Even to the point they had the highest, one of the highest offices, never spoke one day. It's all politics. Government has to be proactive. We, Unity Party government, Ellen Joseph Solif government, my time, I complained that they were not proactive in listening to the requests and complaints of the people, the workers, the, the, the villagers. The companies are not there to solve these problems. It's government that need to solve these problems. Workers need to lay their complaint and government needs to go in there and solve the problem and protect the citizens, protect the workers, and protect the investors. If they don't do that and it reaches an explosion point, then the people will take the law in their hands. And when it happens, this is what you see. So this is lessons learned. This government will have to be proactive and assertive. They will have to move in when the citizens complain, when the workers complain, when the company complain. People, the government will have to move in and solve it. If you don't solve it, you can expect a whole lot more of these things to happen throughout the country. Allow me to ask my last question, and Dwalu can come in. Uh, it's very important for me to do this. Uh, you're talking about government being proactive. You almost said walk the same walk. We talk the same talk. I saw mm -hmm. you in Maryland in the mud. You were walking. You got stuck. I saw you. You had to go through Africa to come by way, uh, you know, to, through the border to enter into your own country because of bad roads. I, I, we, we, we know who you are. Mm -hmm. We know how you're fighting for the people of Liberia, but let's just call Spade or Spain. They have now opened another investigation that, well, we are sending team, we, this government will investigate. The last investigation, you talk about being proactive, and when I hold my government responsible, that listen, folks, let's listen to what the president said, and I will ask you my question. The issue raised by the armed forces wives affect all sectors of our population throughout the country. We inherited these problems as we have been in office for barely 21 days only. The problems take on graver connotations when it comes to the military. The men and women in arms put their lives on line to defend and protect 
us. We must be extra sensitive to their plight. The army is our collective national pride, and we must preserve its dignity. I have therefore appointed a special independent investigator to probe into these grievances and report to me within two weeks. My question to you, Ambassador, the first investigation is about 17 days and counting. The Liberian people are still waiting for a comprehensive report. My, my, listen, let me fair with our fellow Liberians. We understand the government just took over. But 17 days, the president gave them two weeks. The issue, you can go around the country. Another investigation will open again. You think it's about time that this investigation, every time the president speaks, every time you have a meeting like today, open another investigation called emergency cabinet meeting, you think the people will buy into it, knowing very well that it was just a reason to start the situation? You think the people should bat into an ambassador knowing very well this thing will just hit right bottom and there will be nothing coming out of it? Well, I I don't think so. I think the you've raised a very legitimate concern. And the president knows that. I mean, his, his, his cabinet, his government officials are listening to you right now. And they're listening to Liberian people. They are answerable to the people. You know, today is not like yesterday. This is the age of social media. This is the age today that you have an explosion of media network. This is the age of Stanton with a spoon and his, his group. It's not like before. It can be business as usual. Even if government says it's not going to be business as usual, it's not because they say so. It's because social media, conscious population, a youthful population, you know, they, they are demanding. So the demands are uh, greater, you know, from this generation. And so, yes, whether you like it or not, the government and any other subsequent government will succumb to the wishes of the people because the people were asked the questions. And uh, so, yes, there, there has to be some redress to these and there has to be a follow up. The only reason I see for some of these delays is that the task, you see, once you assume the mantle of leadership, <laughs> the work doesn't wait for you until you put your shoes, your socks, your necktie and a coat on before they start to come. They start to overflow the first day. So the sooner you complete your government and you have everyone in place and all of the infrastructure uh, institutions are, are running, the sooner you do that, the better and more capable you are to, to deal with these issues. Otherwise, you, you just have a lot of them on the back burner waiting until certain people are appointed, are confirmed, and then budget allocated and stuff. And these things don't wait. So I think those who are working with the formulation of the government need to do a better job in terms of the time. It's taking too long. And um, we need to, to speed up. Otherwise, you start to have some seeds. This government can be brought to its knees if you have all of these things coming up, piling up, and you're not you know, settled to address them. And I think the sooner we do that, the better it will be. So yes, these things need to be addressed. Just by listening today, the president advisors need to advise him to you know, address these things immediately because you have exposed it. You know, Most times people forget these things, but you brought it up and other people are bringing it up. And you people like you, when they say, keep your feet to the fire, that's what it, literally, that's what it means. It's the, the fourth estate. People like you, the conscious few, the eyes and, and the mouth of the, 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 the masses, you hold us accountable in the public space and um, we are obliged to, to, to meet the challenges that you set forth. And this is a major challenge. And I think they ought to do that. Thank you. Well, Mr. Duardo, please, your two, three questions, sir. Hi, Ambassador. Welcome to the show, as always. It's, it's, it's a pleasure having you on. Let me get to my point. I don't believe there is anything more important, or there are a few things more important than the preservation of a country's future, especially the young people of our country. So the issue of drug is very important that we tackle that issue. My first question to you is this. Whenever we, you were a senator, whenever a legislation is passed in the Senate, and for instance, when it comes to concession, 
We have all these agreements with multinational corporations. What I've noticed, unless this is this, and I'm not aware of this, but I've never read it anywhere. Whenever we have this agreement, there is no entity in the government that tracks deliverable from the concessionaire or the company that comes to Liberia. I'm speaking specifically to the issue in Grand Cayman County. Now, whatever agreement we have, if the agreement says they're going to do X, Y, Z, nobody creates a report. Most responsible countries in the world, they will have a few agents assigned to that multinational that will be present in everything they're doing, that submit a quality report to leadership in Morovia. Do we have any such thing? And if we do, where is it located? Why haven't we done it? Because we can prevent some of this chaos that's happening in Grand Cayman County. How do you respond to that, sir? Well, I will first um, disagree that uh, you don't have an entity to monitor these uh, people on their in the concession agreements and the deliverables. I think first and foremost, every entity in this country has a monitoring arm, that's the legislature. Okay. Okay. And most of these concession agreements have a revision clause of five years period, most of them. So you can monitor after five years, where are we with all of these benchmarks? And each legislator, each legislature, county legislature uh, caucus should be monitoring these, these uh, companies. Sometimes it happens that the legislators from these counties are all too busy fighting each other. They never get to really work for the people. I've experienced that in Maryland. I experienced that. There was too much infight. A lot of people have this infight. But the solution to that is the citizens themselves, who the legislators report to, should demand these concession agreements, the contracts. They should be informed on the deliverables, and they themselves should be able to say, hey, lawmaker, where are we with this contract? You know, as this age of social media is taking over, let me just say this to the public. Your lawmakers will not work if you don't hold them accountable. As a former lawmaker myself, I know what it is to be complacent because you're comfortable. No one is asking you questions. When people go on agricultural break, they should be able to report what they've done and they should be able to tell you what they're going to do this year. And I want to promise you the legislative body, the entire body should have a meeting with the citizen and present to the citizen what they're going to do this year, the legislative agenda. So at the end of the year, when you come back, we want to ask you on these things that you were going to do, which one have you done? And so that's how it works. But no one held us accountable like that. We go to the county, we want to have town hall meetings we have. You don't want to have it, it's okay, as long as you can have a small party here and there, and people and give some money here and there, and it's okay. okay. And so lawmakers don't feel that they need to sit together and report to the people. But beyond the legislature, you have the Bureau of Concessions. These are people who have the specialized uh, mandate to look after the all related uh, concessions issues. And so there's a new age. The citizens were going, are going to be mobilized. They are mobilized. They are energized. Right now, they're only talking politics. Now they need to go into the details of who's taking the resources from the county. What does this contract say? I am one person in the legislature. I said all of these concession agreements should be posted on the internet. It's a public document. It's for the citizen. They should be informed. When I was in the Senate, when we were trying to give out the CRC rubber copper plantation, I printed the concession agreement. I made four copies. I gave them to the mayor of Plebo. And I asked them to paste it on the wall of people I give to the tribal people and the youth and have everyone to have a copy. And I told them to read it. And I was and I went back to find out from them what was their feedback. People need to be informed. So this is what it is. The, the, the town people don't know what's in the concession agreement, and they are the owners of the land. And so they see people getting rich, the people walk away, they putting the dust in their faces, and it's okay, government gave it to them. No, 
there's a new day and things need to change. The more conscientized our people are, the more accountable we will be held. And the more accountable we will be held, the more performant we will be. I, I, I agree with you, Senator. Um, uh, Fatima Sarli, welcome to the show, Mama. I agree with you uh, to some extent, but I'm going to say this. It is true we do have these agencies set up. They should be regulating these operations, especially these concessions. But I know they are not regulated there because we can see the implementation. But let me ask my second question. And this come, actually comes from one of the, the, the listeners here, which is Bill Carson. I believe the DEA is cash trapped. They don't have the money to run the operation. A.B. Kroban came and Director Kroban came into the studio and mentioned that. Do you think it's a great idea, and I believe it's a great idea, to confiscate some of the properties of this drug dealer and it's proven through the court of law, auction them off and use the money to fight drugs in this country? Absolutely. I think that's even in the drug law. But that's the way to go. Okay. You confiscate everything and you lock them up. You know? And let me also say this. So now, and this is the kind of message we'll give, speak to Director Kruma and his team tomorrow when my group meets with them. Things are not the same. Mm -hmm. Yesterday is gone, buried in history. It's a new day. If we continue to see the drug dealers leaving, <laughs> the police custody, the, 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 the legal system, don't blame the people when they take the law in their hands and start going after them. Because it will, if it reaches that point, yes, it might reach that point. Mm -hmm. This is a social problem. People get frustrated. They say, okay, government after government is the same story. You can't rely on government. You have to rely on the people. That's why you start to see mob justice. That's why you Correct. start to see people going after, and, and that's not what you want. Correct. This happens in other countries, by the way, if you don't know. Let it not happen here. You're given a responsibility. You're given a task. We have to ensure that those mothers who see their children walking like zombies and disappear from the home and hear that they are dead and buried and they didn't know where they are. Parents who see their children around like that. Families broken. Kids who see their friends dying like that. People who were smart, university graduates who are now eating from the streets. Simply someone has tempered with their brain by bringing in a market or some product. No, 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 no. And look at these guys. Look when they arrest them. Look how they look like. Like the real devil trying to pray on our own. Mm -hmm. So don't let the population take the law in their hands because if it has to reach there, it will reach there. And you will have no one else to blame but ourselves. That's right. Thank you. No, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Duardo. Thank you again. We'll also be uh, bringing in uh, Senator Francis Dupo to add to this conversation for tonight. This is a big show today. Uh, we will also try to bring in Deba Vabala from Grand Cape Man, the newly elected senator, to add her voice to this. Uh, she's driving, they are leaving Grand Cape Man. Uh, but before I bring in Dr. Richardson, let me play the second video from uh, Grand Cape Man, the situation today, which is so bad for our country. We have to be very objective, no fear, no favor, but let's listen as the people demand, what actually they asking for? We don't want Daba! We don't want Daba! We don't want Daba! Okay, folks, uh, we say this is the voice of the protesters here in King George Town of loudly shouting, they don't want Deba Allen. We don't want Deba! 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 Okay, so as you see, we don't want Deba. Okay, they are talking about Deba Allen, this gentleman. Uh, Dr. Richardson, please take over. I have to answer the senator very quick, please. I think it was my turn to ask uh, Senator Balu, Ambassador Balu, I'm sorry, a question. So, Ambassador, my question to you is uh, some of our security members were sent to Kip Mount and uh, to secure, you know, the riot or protest that was going on. As I listen to you, you seem to have a good understanding of social complex problems. When you have humans working in a mining system, there's bound to be these kind of uh, riots. There's bound to be uh, unhappiness. 
you know, as compared to working to a smaller system, you know, like you have like, you know, Orange or what they have electronics, you know, and they have just an office of four men. How is it that this government didn't seem to be prepared for this protest? Do you have any thoughts about that? Like what? Why is it that we have to go result to shooting? I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Richardson, and uh, to our guest, Ambassador Balu. I have the uh, Senator, uh, Deba Babala, on, yeah. on the phone. She's driving. They're all leaving Grand Park. So allow us to hear from her and we'll continue okay. with uh, uh, former Senator John Balu. Uh, Senator Babala, welcome to Spawn Talk. Thank you very much, and good evening to all of you. Thank you. The conversation today, as you know, we are here. Our guest for today is Ambassador John Balu Jr. and the rest of the team. Uh, we will be speaking to Francis Dopo and other folks from Grand Cape Mine. We are showing uh, videos. We are we have pictures. Very bad. People died today. I mean, that's your county now. One of the two senators you are. What's going on? Can you update the nation tonight, ma'am? Thank you. Yes, it has been a really hectic two days for us in Cape Mount. And everything has to do with the operation of the Beer Mountain in Cape Mount, in King Chow, and the Matamo Corridor. Beginning two days ago in the Matamo area, the people started a protest. But before then, about three weeks ago, they called us to a community meeting in, in Bangoma, a town called Bangoma that is supposed to be relocated to allow Beer Mountain to mine in the original town. They have several issues. Among them was their relocation site, which they consider a very small area, 60 acres that wouldn't allow them space enough to do their farming and to also have graveyard and all of that. So we decided to intervene in that as a caucus. We had several meetings. We had a meeting with the B Mountain representative. And we came to a point where the people said they didn't want the new place. They didn't want the design of the houses. If you are familiar with the rural communities, the people usually build their houses with spacious room and they have space in the backyard to do gardening and they have their cooking outside because they do not use stove or coal pot in the house. But the new structures that they are constructing for them, which they said the community endorsed the design, the bathroom space in a small, the kitchen very tight, small porches. So they complain about those. When we had a discussion and the company representative said this was what was agreed, so they had difficulty in relocating it. So we're still in that negotiation with them, but we agreed at the first discussion that they were going to stop the construction work where it was until we conclude the negotiation with the company and the community people. However, they continuously to call on us as leaders that regardless of what we arrived at that day, in spite of the decision, they were still building these, these houses and that they didn't want them, they didn't want to live in them. And we kept holding them down until we can have a discussion. On, on day before yesterday, we got a report that there was a protest there. So yesterday we went into that, we, got, we arrived there, with a huge crowd in the town and everything was like kind of outside town. And the police presence, the ERU have to come in to put things under control. We went in there, we discussed with them and they agreed to cease the protest. We talked to the police and the B Mountain senior official that was on the ground. He said he's the security consultant and we asked them to please remain in their face and cease the construction work which are bringing the agitation. We also talk to protesters to cease the protest until we come and sit around the table and have a discussion. When we were on our way, we understand, we, heard, we received calls that King John people had already gathered at, at several points along the road with rope rats. We managed to, I went particularly to intervene in that alone, talk to them. 
they refuse to leave because they too have brought 38 comes to for us. And we started talking about some of them, including the presence of the armed men around the King Jong community and the, 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 the lack of jobs. Sometimes they get jobs, they don't get employment. There are many, many things laid out there. No facilities, no good hospital, all the social services lacking, and that Turkish nationals were coming to do works that they can do, including pumping fuel, fixing tires, doing driving work, and all of that. So we received that document and decided to plan to have a meeting with them. However, they gave some ultimatum for which they started their protest too. So we tried to get them out of the protest place. They said they were not leaving, but then we negotiated with them that we didn't want any violence. They should remain on their side and not to get in touch with the police that were already pre-positioned because of the, 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 the potential of conflicts in the area. So they agreed and I left. But later on in the night, it became very violent. There were calls all over, police moved in, reinforcement were in, several tear gas were sent all around the community, and the whole community just became very chaotic. This morning, it even escalated, and deaths were reported. We went in this morning, this afternoon actually, with a team of legislators, and other leadership of the country went in there and tried to intervene. There was a big meeting. After that meeting, we agreed that we gave for a space of two weeks to look into these issues, beginning immediately tonight. We agreed that the community people will remain in their community. They will not come to the police. They will not engage your company property. They will remain in their area. The police, too, will not do any arrest so that they cannot again start any violence in the area. So those things were agreed upon tonight. We announced it to them and that how we left. We came to the hospital. There were three patients there in CNJ. They are undergoing treatment. Three of them got wounded. Some of them are in the glass, but the other man only two fingers. The other one has a, 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 a wound in his thigh. We don't know what's the cause. But the doctor said he was going to look at it, but they began treating him. The other man had a wound on his head, like a stone that might have been thrown at him, but he was there. The three of them were taking treatment. One of them was supposed to leave this evening, so we took care of that and then. There was a complaint that some of their protesters were also arrested and being kept in the face with the police. We went and engaged the police, and the police said all those that were arrested were transferred to Monrovia. And there were wounded individuals, including the police and civilians. All of them have been transferred to JFK. So we agreed tonight that upon arrival, we're going to go to a certain those, those, those that came either at the police station in Zone 6 or those that were sent to the hospital. We just left Zone 6, and we identified the six persons that came from King George. They are there a long way, about 17 persons from Bangoma Inn. So Zone 6 is crowded with Kipatinians who were involved in the protest. Tomorrow, we intend to move to JFK Hospital to identify those that got wounded and are admitted there. They, we were able to see one dead body in the town hall. And then we arranged that our body be brought to Monrovia to a funeral home while we do the investigation, get to get to the family and sit and arrange for funerals. So, so far, so good. There is calm tonight in King George. There is also calm in Bangoma. But there's a need that we as leaders move quickly along with the company and all of the connected agencies to look for this because we had a video for this morning. There were calls all around. We called community leaders who couldn't get them. Everyone was calling, they were shooting, they are killing our people, and it was all chaotic. 
Senator, Senator, thank you very much. As you know, we are here. Our guest is the former Senator John Balu Jr. But allow us to ask question, and I think uh, Senator Balu will make a comment. I know you are in the vehicle driving you into Morovia, but please allow us, man. Well, my first question: Can you confirm the amount of uh, the, the number of death? How many people died so far? At this point, I can confirm one that I saw today, but tomorrow we are due to the hospital to identify to those that were brought. The police will not speak to whether they are still alive or they are dead because they were brought as wounded people to JFK. So when we get to the hospital tomorrow, we know whether another death was added or two or what the issue is. But I cannot confirm that as at now. We respect Until that. We get to the hospital tomorrow to expect him. We respect that and thank you. Now, but let's just go into the the, 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 the main issue here. Give us full reason why they are protesting. Just not too much. The people just want to know. One of which they are now telling us, is it true? And I will be very exact with, uh, with, with you, Madam Senator. Is it true that Mr. Allen, yeah, we are showing his picture. One of the reasons why they are on the street, they do not want Mr. Allen to represent them. Is it true? Uh, of course, yes, and they want to pass by King Joe. One of the placards they have had written on it, Deba Allen must go. And in their chanting, in my interaction with them, they said when Deba Allen leaves, the protest will finish. So I asked them, why you think so? They said they believe that Deba being the highest a uh, Liberian personnel with the manager with the with the with the company is responsible for some of the neglects that they are experiencing according to their understanding, according to what they told us. They believe as a Liberian he should be protecting their rights, but they complain about the, 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 the denial of employment. They are serving as contractors sometimes for more than two, three years. We have investigated that to ascertain the facts around that. They even complain that they, 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 when the company employs them as contractor, in the event that they remain in the employ of the company or in a contractual agreement with the company, when they die before they can issue an employment letter, those were wow. things they said. There are no insurance. They complain about many, many things. Wow, thank you very much. Let me bring the others. First of all, we'll go back before we get to Dr. Richardson. Ambassador, you want to speak uh, to the senator or you have concerns, sir? You and your colleagues who went there and had this uh, meeting, you know, that's the way to go about it. Now, what you've done, you've prepared the ground for government to move in and resolve the crisis and so to, to mediate. And so my advice would be now that government takes advantage of this temporary you know, arrangement that you have that brought calm and move in there speedily to try to address this. I have been in similar situations like you've just done many times. We had the Rockdown, Maplewen, uh, um, can issues in Maryland. I went to resolve it. Government should have moved in. They delayed the people went back again and it was worse. They took over the city hall. So I'm just saying, learning from experience and sharing my experience, I think what you've done is exemplary. You, that's a mark of a good leader. Now government needs to move in. You need to insist that the government, with this tax force now, this is, I must also admit that, uh, that the tax force that the government has set up with these ministers involved, moving in is pretty much timely and it's in the right direction. Let them seize this opportunity and start working first thing tomorrow. And keep the population informed on the progress made. Sometimes when these people are quiet, yes, sure. you think it's forgotten. And people don't hear from the people in the villages that are different from the people in the city. They trust you, they want to be informed, they want to know that they're not forgotten. If you give them any reason no. to not trust you, they, they, to regain that trust is difficult. So I think right now it's good. I mean, I'll congratulate the senator and the leaders who moved in. And the demands these people are making, typical demands for all concession areas. Jobs, jobs that they can do, others are bringing people from outside, better incentives, better conditions. These things are like that. And sometimes when we look into these concession agreements and look into the way these people operate, 
there are a lot of room for improvement. Now we encourage government to look there to see how there can be an improvement on the livelihood of the citizens. Because after all, they are the ones we are here for. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ambassador Dr. Richardson, Mr. Duardo, Conor Gray. Thank, you, thank you very much. Let me quickly say that one thing we did in order for them to be informed from the very get-go is so if we invited five, I think... Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Senator? The police, whom the police, yes, how... I'm here. Yeah, go ahead, man, please. Hello? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay. So we invited we invited the protest the, the protest leaders about four of them to come to Monrovia tomorrow and go to the police station to make sure that the first person that they were insisting that the police are in custody are in Monrovia and the police, in which we have just confirmed. So they will be here tomorrow. They will also be here to go and identify the two persons that are at the hospital at the JFK. So those are things that we arrange. We'll be working with them. The team that went were very magnanimous, and I mean, everybody was involved. Everybody was committed. The team from the lower house joining the senators. We all worked with them to make sure that they understood exactly where we stood, and we advised them against violence because if we escalate to, into anything that we even heard them as they have already done today by losing some of their competitors. Thank you. Let's bring in Dr. Richardson Duarte. I, I know you are very busy. Your phone calls coming in, but please allow us to ask at least one question each, man. Dr. Richardson. Yeah, uh, Senator Vabla, my senator from Cape Mount. I want to tell you thank you so much for your intervention, although the crisis is still unfolding. Um, my question to you is, based on your preliminary assessment of the situation, do you think that the people are right to call for the resignation of Deba Allen, uh, based on everything that I've seen, he seems to have violated, uh, uh, you know, the rights of the people. And if you are going to call for his resignation, I agree with uh, Ambassador Ballard that it should be clear cut. It should be a letter late, writ, uh, written to the executives. Uh, it should be a public announcement. It shouldn't be something that's in a secret because I know as a legislator, you have to investigate things. You got to call for legislation legislature investigations, you don't have that kind of time. It's an urgent situation. So what do you think? Do you think that people are right to call for uh, just preliminary assessment? Now, I know you can't, you're a politician, you can't come here and tell me, say, oh, yes, I agree on that. But your preliminary assessment, is Deborah Allen acting uh, in the right frame of mind for the people? Well, let us say this require a deeper understanding of the issues. Even though Deborah Allen name is ahead of all of the, all of what is going on currently, but there's a need for the government, including ourselves, to understand the MDA. What are the things in there protected for Liberian workers, or for even the communities? We need to understand those things. We need to understand the relationship with Deborah Allen to this company. Whether it's, 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 it's a relationship or an employment relationship that the government has a voice over, that like we can just say, okay, government, please record about Allen, or whether you are employed privately, or whether he role, he is actually delivering his, his, the role for which he was, he was employed. That part, I haven't understood it very well, and I think the investigation over the next few days or weeks will provide that information to us. Because Deva Allen, as an employee of the company, should not unilaterally be taking decision denying our people of their rights. If that is the case, the company itself should know that they operate in a country to make profit. And we also have the minerals, we have the minerals, so that when you operate and find our minerals, we should have a benefit through the jobs, through social services, do whatever that will be left here so that tomorrow, when the minerals are depleted, the people can look back and say, we had minerals here. Every time you speak to the people in King George, especially the elderly ones, they will refer to they will refer to past experiences like from the NIOC, the LMC, in the same way in Liberia, that left much behind, absolutely. And we know that gold has a huge price. If you talk to the poor, they know the price of gold. 
you keep him money so much going for her county, and I really wish that the school family can visit the concession area, especially the Kinjo area and the Bangoma area, and see the abject poverty, no roads, the schools are in Dani, the hospitals are incorrect. As case when we live in NROC era, they were very good hospitals. You have transportation, you have good school. Nothing like that happening in Cape Town. So it's really something that has been concerning to us. And as a 55th legislature, the caucus we've been discussing about it, we started taking some steps to see how some of these things could be corrected. It is only unfortunate I had to end up with a protest now that people have to lose their life. But there's a need to really look into this thing in a in a very more focused way to see what the things are, what can be addressed. If Jebel Allen is a problem and is identified that he's a problem, yes, the company and the government got the MTAs between the two parties. They can decide, okay, this is our problem. So let's try to solve it as part of resolving some of the, the, the concerns it raised. I forgot to mention the issue of the military presence. That's an issue that everywhere you went to talk about. And you and I know that when military is deployed outside of the parish, it sends out a signal right away, even in the urban areas. So when the people see around the mine that they have armed men from AFL, that alone has been a concern. Not only yesterday, not only during the protest, but it has been there since they were deployed. So that's something that we have even lifted TV and the Senate to see the Ministry of Defense and that of justice, the security sector to look at the issue and see. If because it's a concession area and it's prone to violence and the need and reform mechanism, let them find a reform mechanism that is acceptable in a civilian setting like that. So these issues are just so many, like I told you, they are very heavy. The other issue is one of them, and the reason why it's lifted, people feel that as a Liberian senior manager, he should be doing more for the community and for the Liberians. The, the so Senator, I'm going to bring in uh, Mr. Duaru. 12 years, Deba uh, Allen been on this position. This year, we're making 12 years. And the people complain as the same. 13, 12 to 13 million dollars is taking all of that county. 12 to 13 million dollars is taking all of that county. Mr. Duaru, this is concerning. We have the Senator, sir. Yes, Senator, welcome to the show. We appreciate you. Um, I, I want to remind you, Madam Senator, I'm pretty sure you're aware of this. The concessions are not responsible for our schools and our hospital. It is the duty of government to ensure that happens. Uh, yes, my question to you, Madam Senator, what is the rationale behind every single time our people bring a problem forward, nobody addresses it, we wait there is no preemption to make sure the problem does not go to riot, et cetera. We wait until something happens, and then we go into the counties and give an appearance as though we are doing something. What is the rationale behind it? Why don't we solve the problems before they actually happen? These problems are not problems that you solve at the, at the snap of your fingertip. I will share the 38 counts petition that was presented to us as leaders. These are things that require different stakeholders. Like in our case, there is a new government under formation, as you are aware. You have a stake there that the Minister of Justice is supposed to be a part of. Until recently, there was no Minister of Justice since after the petition was done. You talk about the Ministry of Lands, Mines, and Energy. That's supposed to be really the key ministry in the mining concession. You talk about the, 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 the concession, the concession, eh, 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 what do you call them? The Bureau of Concession. The office resource for concession. Bureau of Concession. That is just being, that is someone being appointed there. So those are some of the things that delay this. You cannot sit down just as leaders to address some of these things without reaching out to the national government through the sector agencies and ministries to address them. And these are some of the things we told them in our engagement meeting. But again, when people are going through some of these situations, they are on a patient, especially when the company has operated for over 10 years, almost 12 years. And every year, you see things happen to them, no redress. So sometimes you see that it will come out the way it came up. 
But it's not intentional that leaders wanted to sit and watch it escalate to where it is today before we go into it. We started a discussion, we started a conversation, we have had several meetings, but things were not moving as fast as they are expected it to move. And like I said, it's a new government. We didn't have a Minister of Justice to go to, we didn't have a Minister of Mines and Energy, and the rest of the key officials that are supposed to work with us. So that's the reason why we really did not take it as it should be. Right now, we have some of these people in, in, in position already. They've been confirmed. As, at to, as of tomorrow, we we'll start engaging them so that we can sit and draw out of the 38 comes. Which ones we think we can achieve in a rather quick period of time, in a rather short period of time? We will sit and identify those and start moving towards them. And as we told them today, at every point of the way, we will have meetings with them. We have town hall meetings. We have discussions, and they will be informed appropriately. So, uh, Senator, let, bring, let me bring in Glendy and uh, Conor Gray. Uh, I know you've got to go, and we have to go back to Ambassador Balu. So, Glendy, your one question, man. Hello, Daba. How are you? Hi, how are you, my dear? I'm good. So, let me not waste any time. I want to ask my question is, um, let's look in the future. And if the result is to remove um, Daba Allen, what would be the immediate plan for replacing? What would the company do? What would happen? Because you have to think about the future also. If he's the, if he's the, the main issue and he's removed, what happens? Like I mentioned earlier, there are 38 counts. Daba Allen can is one of those. It needs to be determined through discussion with a company, whether it's in a company, company's so fair view to, to appoint someone to that position, or whether they share that right or responsibility with the government, then we will understand that. It should it be, should it be determined that the Allen should be removed. Of course, there are other capable and qualified Liberians that can fill in the position if that decision. All right. So my last question, my last question is very short, uh, and and I want to understand: Do you know why there are men? There are men there. Do you know why we have the army represented there, watching the people? Do you know why they are there? I don't know. But I have tried to seek explanation, even on the Senate floor the other day. I wrote the Senate a letter to investigate why they are there and they should consider withdrawing the armed men and replace them with police who can that can live with the civilian without any fear because their presence there is still fears into the people. These people have been complaining about the armed men presence at that at that location forever. Since they went there, it has been a problem. Anytime leaders went there. Even while I was here, Senator, whenever I visited it, it was one of the main concerns. Why were the armed people there? And when I said without being scared, but I consider that King John or B mining in, in Cape Town, it's not a only gold mining area. There's MMG gold in Bone County that does not have armed deployment. There are other construction areas like Asla Mitan. There are no armed men deployed. So why Cape Town? I haven't gotten any explanation. I don't understand why, and I really wish I could. So, Senator, you bet you've been senator since November. Uh, maybe the say the we're gonna whatever it is. You are now the people's senator. We wish you well. Uh, and who paying the the AFS soldier that are washing those folks' property and 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 the job? Who paying them? Uh, well, we just. What's that? They said, no. You remember recently there was a protest of army wives? Yes, ma'am. The petition they presented, they did indicate in their petition that the that the that the B mountain pays those army people that are deployed around their, 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 their installations. 
And, and that's uh, and let me bring in Connor Gray because we got to go back there. You know, I know you were coming to the one day for us to talk, but this is getting so interesting. And I think if we can ask this question, the people will understand where we are when we will talk about Ken Joe and the entire Kipman with all this thing. Uh, who paid them now? You say the people paid them. Then uh, why? But I know you are investigating. You're just a new kid on the block when you talk about the Senate. You are investigating. I'll follow you. I watch, I watch you whenever you speak on the Senate floor, and I wish you well. From my end, I know we have you in studio, and we give you a hard time with all of our questions. Colonel Gray, can you ask the last question, sir? Uh, Madam Senator, hi, uh, Colonel Gray here. And of course, uh, if I can chime in, the issue about deployment of soldiers um, on contemporary uh, uh, mining concession is that King George is not the only place or B Mountain is not the only area. One of the reasons why the leadership was rejected so vehemently, the leadership of the AFL, was because of these kinds of uh, un unnecessary uh, actions that were, that were being carried out by the former leadership. And the people are determined, and those uh, issues were raised up, as you said rightly, uh, in some of their petition. Look around, do an investigation. There are so many of these kinds of operations set up by uh, the former defense minister and his uh, chief of staff. But that's not the issue. I continue to hear you kicking the can down the road. Um, I would have um, established as a senator, matter of fact, that would have formed part of my campaign um, exercise that I was going to um, take care of some of these concessions uh, and concession hearing um, problem. We, we need to be proactive. Didn't sound like uh, we were proactive with this. Uh, Ambassador Bali spoke well. We were not proactive and it seems as though we're still finding ways to say we will engage. It, it should be mounted, it's not the only um, only concession that, 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 that with this problem. There's so many other, other concessions within the Western cluster in that area that, ha, that with, with similar problem. But we will wait, as my brother Dwali said, something has to happen before we can act. We are reactive as opposed to proactive. And I'm not hearing you sounding proactive at all. You're sounding more reactive. Have you had any, uh, any um, stakeholder meeting for which um, some of these issues would be addressed? I know you spoke of that. Yes, as I said three weeks ago, we met in a town hall meeting in Bangalore where the relocation issue is, where the protests began. We were there and we decided to elevate the meeting to Monrovia. A representation of the community came to Monrovia and we met with a representation of the company. But we did not arrive at an agreement and we were still mm -hmm. trying to consult and discuss and have meetings. Even the day the protest started in, in, in the Bagoma, the leadership of the town was in Monrovia meeting with, 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 with legislators from the county. So we have been engaging them. But probably, like I mentioned earlier, we're not at the pace that the people expected. Again, we have to know that this is not a one man thing, it has a whole lot of stakeholders connecting agencies that are supposed to be involved. There is a legal document between the government and the company, the MDA. So it's not as something that is just a little arrangement between two questions that you can just go and resolve it. So, so you have to go so far, and then you have to consult, and then you have to make sure that you remain on the right path. Legality to it is a national agreement. It represents Liberia. So, if you say we're not proactive, I would say we started it as a new law because we started as a new the 55th legislator. We started engaging them. The caucus was completely involved. All five of us from Cape Town, but the people ran out of patience because they have been there. It's a bad law. It's not only today. For those who have followed Cape Town and the B Mountain, there have been several protests. It's been protests yeah, even before our are. time. So because of this bad law, people must have grown all of patience. And they thought as new law, 
doctors or new new safety uh, uh, legislator, we could just solve it over one week period. But I think from the onset of our leadership, from the time we took over, we've been having consultation with the lower house, the upper house, and looking at the B money issue to see how we can resolve it during our tenure. And we are determined to do that collectively. Thank you very much, Senator. I know you'll come in studio. I know, listen, we will have you. It's more than we think. A lot of folks are watching. They are listening to you all over in the country. We appreciate your time. Drive home safe, be safe, and we'll talk to you again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. Good yes. night. Good night, ma'am. All uh, right, so there, there you have it, Ambassador. We're going to come back to you. And uh, I know Conor Gray, uh, before, bring the Ambassador in, Conor Gray. Everything you have heard, bring in the Ambassador. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, let me throw this uh, in before Colonel Gray comes in. Let's just conclude on this. Uh, let's speak a little bit about the army's presence there. Yes, sir. I mean, this is completely an abuse of the army. Okay. The army is used for external threats. Police are used for internal arrangements. Unless in the case of state of emergency declared by the head of state, the president. Now, right now, you are having a series of complaints over the air, over the years compiling up to the point that now there are 38 counts. And your solution is to have B mounting, give some big person in the government money so that they can arrange the military to protect them. And the military is there as an intimidating tactics, suppressing the people so that they are looking at it, oppressing, that, those are oppressive tactics. So your complaints are there, but you have the military now, and we do anything we deal with you. This is a complete abuse of uh, lack of um, uh, abuse of the military and, and bad governance. I so these are the kind of the, more ambassador kind of things that they employ over the past. If you heard over the over a few years ago, people spoke of the military being used to mine in Grand Crew, the equipment of the military in all of Augusta. These things are wrong, and people take money from these big concessionaires who amass millions and billions of dollars, and then they sit down here and give somebody money that will protect them without addressing the issues of the people. Yes. So this is completely wrong, and uh, I hope you follow up on this. The first thing the legislature has to do right now, or the president, is to make sure the military gets out of there and replaced by police, and, and that's my question, Ambassador. I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's what frustrating a lot of people. When you tell me, sir, with 27 days into this government, if the president can pick up the full senator and say, listen, AFL will draw. Deborah Babala can make that request. She's a certain senator, one of the certain uh, senators over there. We agree. People are saying that they have some of the equipment, the military equipment. What's so important to that spot that people are protecting these guys? That's what I'm asking. Who paying them? Mm -hmm. Liberians want to know how much they're getting from the company. How much AFL receive or have they been receiving from this company, Ambassador Biden, that they are still killing our fellow Liberians? And that's so even illegal call, for them to, to pay to, the AFL. To, 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 call the media, to call the media, uh, pick up the phone. Now you get Justice Minister. Now you have the Atten Defense Minister. But she was the Deputy Chief of Staff. She is fully aware of this arrangement. That's why when the president called for an investigation, I saw the demand of the Army Watch. We are counting the days, 70 days and counting. Because something, something is smelling. And we need to know what's smelling. But again, Ambassador, thank you. Uh, let us have a good show. We'll be bringing in the rest of the guys for us to talk on this issue. Colonel Gray, your question. Welcome to the show, I said, though. Well, let's do the round of questions. Let's hit Ambassador Baldwin so high on national issue. Whenever he comes on the show, I love to just beat him with question because we want to get into the, the, the deeper part of his mindset. Colonel Gray. And, and, and I couldn't agree with uh, Ambassador Balu more. Uh, these are some of the, the psychological uh, you know, situations that led us to war where the army were, was uh, deployed in, in various parts and carried on illegal uh, activity, including mining concessions. Uh, they were heavily present at, uh, at Wiswa and other areas where mining were being conducted. And the same thing, fast forward um, in, in 2024, we're still having this experience. And, and I, want to, I want to think that the army could 
use other soft targets to exercise, you know, peacetime activity. There is hunger in the country. Why not elevate an agriculture battalion and let the army spearhead that? Why not take the road construction that we so badly need from market to farm road and elevate an engineering battalion or unit? Let the army be helping with that. As opposed Medical, to uh, et cetera. as opposed to going to go kick people, you know, behind somewhere when they they they're legally involved in uh in, in protest. I mean, concessions should be able to cater to the locals. They have community re, uh, re reenactment or re engagement um, um act where concessions come in. They help the life of the people. That's that's just part of it, you know. Uh, but Ambassador Balut uh. I'm not too impressed with um, the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs. I think uh, he's hurting the government so early. What's your opinion about that? I'm talking about Ambassador Grisby. I don't like the way he's, he's, uh, he's you know, progressing. I think uh, there are too many personal um, in, in initiatives that he's pushing as, as, as the Minister of State. What's your opinion about that? Well, I don't want to go into details that I don't have before me. However, I feel obliged, uh, maybe in response to what you're saying, especially with the formulation of the government and those appointed, I think it's time that we start to hear names of people from the Southeast. You know, I think it's getting embarrassing that uh, we are receiving calls every day uh, yeah, Senator, what's going on? What's going on? We're not hearing names from the Southeast. We're not hearing. Yeah, there are a few names called, but the skill by which the others are being called, I mean, it's like 10 to 1, probably 20 to 1. So you see, my, my thing is people like us, throughout the campaign, we spoke to our people, me and many others, and they listened to us and followed all those numbers that we were able to gather. And so they still look up to us for direction and uh, what's happening to, to us. So I think it's about time, um, in all frankness and all um, fairness, that the guys from the Southeast are mentioned in the government also, that their the, the, the names are coming up. I know there is an inner circle with the nomination process and the president has the right to work with who he feels comfortable with, and that's his prerogative and within the structural arrangement that exists around the presidency. But like I said, my, my own take when it comes to this is, I think it's time that you help us to make our face look good before our people. And let's hear some names from the Southeast. I mean, we, we don't want to see, I mean, what uh, the last government was doing, having a ratio 20 to one in favor of Grand Cru and South our Easterners and against people from there. That's why we fought it. That's why we from the Southeast went against it. We don't want to have a reverse role on that situation. So I think without I mean, saying much, except you have more specifics on what you want to speak about, in terms of the formulation of the government, I just think it's about time we start to hear names from the Southeast. That's all. You know, before I push the Thank you now, before I push the gavel over, uh, Ambassador, um, what we are here in terms of intelligence is that the president will make certain appointments, and these appointments are, are surcharged, they are changed at um, just before announcement. And these are credible reports we're getting. And, and that, that initiative of, of surcharging the, the appointment is, is spearheaded by Ambassador Grisby. So, uh, because if you look at some of the individuals, they have personal ties to him. So, that's the, the, the range in which I was asking that question. But I'll, I'll, I'll let somebody else. Uh, we're going to allow the, we're going to invite Ambassador about to speak on it uh, before we move on. No, I mean, you see, it's like you have an elephant meat. You caught an elephant, and you caught it. You killed the elephant, so you're in a town, and you think you're going to, you know, butcher the elephant and and, and manage it. No, it's going to get rotten. You have to call the entire town to help you butcher the elephant. So there has to be a more structural approach towards this, this all delegate exercise. And one institution that plays a pivotal role, very strategic role is the unity party itself. So I think 
uh, uh, structural arrangement in, 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 in corporates, the party in the leadership role of that vetting process and things like that, would have sped up the process you know, in a faster way. And some of the problems we have is because we still haven't completed the government yet. Because the process is going kind of slow because it's just a select few who's trying to overly handle everything. Uh, the president is overwhelmed. Um, I can understand his, his line. I had a meeting with him. I saw uh, how overwhelmed he was. I mean, one or two persons cannot have this exercise in their control. It has to be in normal political practices. The political party, the unity party, has to be in the driver's seat with surrounding supporting uh, members to help in the vetting process so it has to speed it up because it's a huge task. A few hand, a handful of persons can do that. So I think it's time to revisit the strategy and have it more inclusive, especially with the party playing a very important role. Yeah, you, you see, Dr. Richardson, can you call me? I, I don't want to, I'm not ready. I, I know my take on this one, but Dr. Richardson, please, Glendy and, oh. and then Isaac. Ambassador, I had a visceral reaction when I heard Senator Fabla say that the people were asking for housing transfer to this other place to be halt, halted. Uh, but somebody overruled and said that they should go ahead and transfer the people over to a housing situation that wasn't consistent to what they were used to, you know, the backyard, because room space. Um, and I, I, I'm wondering, do you think that there's a sense of indecisiveness in leadership for the people who are supposed to make the decision for the people of Cape Mount? Well, again, this the Cape Mountain is a dedicated, it's a typical concession plantation thing. It's a typical thing. It's, I mean, you just change B Mountain, you put CRC, you have the same story. I mean, it's typical, it's standards all over. If you don't address these concerns, they accumulate. And then when you start to accumulate, where do you start from? And so it takes time. Right now, you heard them talking about housing and the arrangement. And then later on, you found workers. I mean, B Mountain is over flooded with Turkish people. Why? Doing things that local people can do. Why? Speak now. You know, you have to be thinking outside the box and sometimes play the conspiracy theory as well, sometimes. What is it that they're hiding that they want to bring so many of the people in a gold mining area? Is it to hide the quantity of gold under uh, a declare and have a, a private or sensitive operation like this? Is, it, uh, is that some of the things they're doing? That you have people to do petty jobs that Liberians can do? We should not have even reached to that level. So there's a lot of things. It's a holistic approach in dealing with it. The first step, hey, set with people and tell them we agree with what we, we understand your case. We're going to deal with it. We'll take it step by step. And as long as you're communicating, they will follow you. As long as they see you communicating and they're part of the process, getting the, the workers union, getting the local chiefs, the youth leadership, the kids. Once these stakeholders are part of the process, there will be no confusion as long as you're making progress. So as the who made decisions to continue with housing when they have halted it. Those are things that people think that they can play with money, small demonstration, a few people, and then it goes on. But in the certain cases, they don't work. So, I mean, President Buaka has done the right thing already. He's set up a committee. I heard that announced with the Minister of Justice, Labor, you know, Mines, and the police, all these people. That's the right thing to do. Let's get them the benefit of the doubt. I want to encourage them to move in yesterday to try to speed up the process and keep the communication over. We haven't said that. I think that should be able to address it, giving them the benefit of the doubt. And I will encourage the citizens to let a new beginning again and see what happens. Give President Boca a chance. I think he means well. So, so, so uh, Ambassador, before uh, Glenny and uh, Acid ask you their question, the issue remains, Ambassador, that this is not a new story. We've been following B Martin. Every Sunday, this jet will arrive in the country uh, in Cape Mine, uh, take away the gold and other minerals, you know, that which they can take away. Um, it's just like they are stealing from the people illegally. 
-hmm. Even though I come to the government of Liberia, or some folks in the government fully aware and they are involved with these different transactions and transport of the golden diamonds. I cannot just sit here and say something, but people are fully aware. Folks in this government, they are fully aware of what's happening. Do you well, still believe, say, do you still believe that there will be a comprehensive uh, you know solution uh, to this B mountain? I don't want us to go to Maryland or you know Bombay County or Buffalo, wherever. Let's talk about B mountain. The year and what the senator she said today, but she ran on the same argument though. I think she was fully aware that you know, if a Syria was in Kilman, she was fully aware that these people they have been protected very highly. Mm -hmm. Look, one thing I can say with certainty is that I believe that President Boaga has the political will to do the right thing given that he's faced and presented with the facts to make the political decision. Mining areas in unsophisticated country like ours, people always rob us blind. I mean, they're always on the declare, they always bribe the people up there, they're always underrated, the taxes are always, you know, cut down. And there are a lot of under the table dealings that take place in unsophisticated country like ours. If the Senate has some means, and that's what we try to do when we were in the Senate, understanding our own lack of capacity, we went through the modernization plan to input expertise to help us present the facts and make political decisions. At this point, if the legislative caucus had the means, I would advise them to secure the services of a consultant, of an expert consultant on how to deal with this. There are people who can point to you all the holes to look into. Look, a senator is a politician, no requirement other than being popular with your people, okay? So you don't necessarily come with expertise. If you happen to have some expertise, it's a give as a plus, but it's not a requirement. So most people, most of us politicians are elected because we're popular. When I said it to my colleagues in the Senate, in the legislature, we got our job because we're popular. Those in the executive got a job because they have their yes, qualification. So normally to really catch and exert oversight, you need to import professionals, experts to help build our capacity to match their uh, uh, qualifications. Yes, I'm a civil engineer. Yes, my legislature has a lot of qualified people. Even this one, the Senate has a lot of qualified people, but that is not a requirement. In there, B mounting, those guys who drafted the concession agreement already were paid something like maybe $200,000 a day. Those are big time corporate lawyers designed to make sure that these guys walk away with extra millions of dollars because of their employment. So you have to know who you're dealing with. You have to have experts in mining, in concessions, in dealing with these things. People like us who had no experience today have a little edge on dealing with those people because we've been there, done that. She is a very willing leader, willing to do that thing without prior experience in dealing with this kind of situation. And I'm not saying people like us had, I'm just saying we are slightly better because we had our chance to learn on the ground. What you need are professionals, consultants that can help you tell you what to ask for, what the questions, what the documents to ask for, whether they, 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 what they have to declare, and to, to vet it, you know, but like I said, so I don't know if you want to continue with this. Uh, no, 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 let's move on. Let's move on. We will have another time of this conversation. Glenny? So, um, Honorable, I wanted to go back to, I heard you talk about um, the drug issue and outsourcing. A, for a Liberian person and looking at Liberia now and how it's drawn up, what would also see means for the government of Liberia when it comes to drugs? Okay. As you are arresting these guys, these dealers, you also have to clear these ghettos. To clear these ghettos, you must have place to capture these people and put them somewhere and rehabilitate them. Today, we have between 20 to 25 existing 
rehabilitation centers. Without support, underfunded, they are just barely doing things. Some of those are back church yard. Some of them are compound. Some of them are fenced in, some are not. But they are successfully dealing with these issues. What we need to do, solutions like yesterday, put in the budget some budgetary support to these people, help build their capacity. Those are doing well, they don't have a fence, put a fence while we are building government multi million data gigantic rehabilitation center. You need a solution today and you need it yesterday. So, I mean, that's so fast. We, and there are some very big institutions, like I said, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church has the, the, the administrative capacity to handle these things because they've done it a million times, like men say in Liberia. The Methodist Church, like the Catholic Church, they have hospitals, they have schools, they have clinics. The Episcopal Church has hospitals, they have schools, they have clinics. I mean, these are people who have been there. They are willing to work. Let's have meetings with them and ask them if they too can take charge of these rehabilitation centers. We do have a lot of public spaces, empty, abandoned um, facilities, boarding schools, this, that. Those things are available today, today in this country. In Maryland alone, we can show you two, three. Okay? But I'm just saying you need to start to think outside the box and reach out to these people. And I don't really want to see government in rehabilitation. I'll source it. If government should do rehabilitation, go look for Bella Yala and have it a serious rehabilitation center. Not to put people in prison and torture them, but to give young people a chance to live again. Change your story. That's one place you can escape and you're there for a year. You learn a trade, you manufacture. When you come outside, you're not only rehabilitated, but you have skills and you can come out with some work, your set of tools and some funding because you've worked there. So those are areas that we could look at. All right. Thank you very much. As it do, you want to come in with your yeah, question? One, one question. Let's take as it do. We can come back to you. All right. Minister Do. Yeah, sure. Hi to everyone. Senator Balud, how are you doing? Nice to talk to, to you again. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the uh, answer you just gave for, from um, my sister question i think you are spot on it um I, I i wanted to go back a little bit on the issue with the beer mountain uh we are only discussing beer mountain today because it is beer mountain but um the issue from there is almost across the country and you were privileged to have served as a senator i wanted to get your perspective on something senator you know uh, in my best guess the problems with these concession companies uh, don't really come from when they need the concession because they come with all of these good, good, sweet, sweet things they put it in it. The problem is always the implementation, they only come with plenty of things, they don't end up doing any of these things to come up. Most of the time, we award them you know those contracts and then they go ahead doing different things. Now, if I were to ask you, based on your, your experience being in the house, what do you think? like now we need to do as a country to ensure before we award any of these companies concessions or even extension what are those things we need to put check boxes on to give us the assurances that indeed they will do if not 100 percent well at least a very very good percentage acceptable to the country of those things they will promise what are those things you think meaning our lawmakers need to look at need to do before awarding these contracts or even extending them at all? To, to address that, when I was in the Senate, I proposed a bill that when the concession agreement comes to us, we publish it. We invite our the citizens from there, let them all see it. When you have public hearings, they come in because they've read it, they come informed, and then they participate. Because every county has its fair share of professional lawyers, accountants and people who love the county who want to make sure that the best thing goes to the county so you get them a chance most times when we have these public hearings people come there they don't know what's in the concession agreement they don't come prepared so they don't know what they're going to ask or you know defend you're not going to read a, a two three hundred page document and prepare by like i said two hundred thousand dollars a day for consultant lawyers so those are things like that happen but then again to answer you precisely it is always a good thing to have, starting from now, if we can, each of these concession agreements must lay out 
all of the plans that they have, what they hope to achieve in year one, year two, year three, year four. So then we can monitor year one, the achievements in terms of the deliverables. If not, then we hold them accountable right there. We don't wait for five years. They say, look, five years, they say, well, all this thing, 10 years now, nothing happened. No, year one. So we need to go into this thing. Lessons learned. I mean, no one is an expert here. We all learn on the ground, okay? And so, yes, that's how we, do, we need to do it. Have the cut down per year deliverables and let them respond to how they address these things. If they all have check marks, thank God these people are working in line with the people of the country and they're doing well for the country. They go to year two. Because most of these concession agreements have clauses that you need to train, recruit Liberians to fill certain positions in certain areas. They need to start manufacturing. They need to start adding values to some of these things. None of these things happen, and nobody is there to question it. The five years regroup clause, we hardly review them in five years. Like I said, the people has been quiet. I just say to you, what do you expect from a country where the leaders don't know what to do and the citizens don't, don't know what to expect? Right. Uh, uh, so, yeah, thank you so much. So on the flip side, then, you you campaign for the unity party from Meriden County and the other places. Um, one thing uh, I am proud of and good of, um, trust me, you will be going to Meriden County back and forth now because there will be no car stuck in the mud anymore. So for that, you should be very good. Uh, but before that, though, I know you spoke about the issue of appointments, the expectation from the, from our people in the Southeast. But as out of that, I know you are a politician, but I would hope you answer this according to how the people's expectations are back in the county. Uh, we know it's like one month, just a little over one month, going to the second month now, or even a, around there. Um, since the coming in of the government from Meriden County, not from the whole country, you have been talking to your people. What have they been expressing to you? I mean, in terms of their expectation as of now and what they have seen so far, what have they been saying? What have your people been telling you? Well, so far they've been congratulating me for the role played. They've been thanking us for changing the government, bringing the system. They've been heralding us for bringing a new day. Then they're just now asking us please continue to fight so that we're not forgotten. You understand? But right now, expectations are high. People are happy. People are in a jovial mood. People are optimistic. They're happy for this change. They believe that something serious has happened. The entire country is breathing better today, all over the country. I mean, the stress, the apprehensions of a irresponsible government that's hanging over you, reckless behavior, those things are gone now. People are happy that they have a very sound, um, civilized environment that we're in. So they're very excited. They keep congratulating, they keep calling. And of course, everyone is looking forward to see who's going to be the superintendent, who's going to hold the commission. Who's, uh, there's the excitement now about the formulation of government. And next steps. I think what I just called about, um, because I don't want us to reach to the point that, I, I, like I said, it's getting embarrassing. When now you're getting calls from not just Maryland, but from Sino, from Grand Gita, from River G, from all over. People who've heard us, people who've seen us, people who've talked to. And so they're asking us because, hey, we owe it to them. If we don't speak on their behalf, who will? We were the ones in the front of this thing. We spoke to them. We talked to them. We told them, listen, this might be one of our own, but this is the wrong one of our own. You know, we need to put the country first and get the thing right. So. At this point, if we don't speak for them, if we don't raise the issue, who will? And so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking advantage of this. I've been raising the issue with people closer to the president who raised the issue in the inner circles, those who helped to formulate it. And I'm sure they're listening. It's just about time. I know they will call people from the Southeast. <laughs> you got to call people from the Southeast. Like just saying, as we call the names now, I think it's time is drag a little bit too long. It's getting embarrassing. That's all. But the people are excited back home. I, I, ambassador, Ambassador, let's do this second round. And uh, yeah, I mean, you still have folks from the Southeast, though, right? Yeah. In the government. Sylvester Grisby is from the Southeast. Right. Right? Don't get me wrong. I said there have been one or two, right? Okay. Right now, the skill is like 20 to 1. I mean, okay. we need to narrow it a little bit. Correct. So, my, my thing to you, I. 
Well, where are you? Are you are you content so far? 27 days into this government? Well, I think we drag a little bit in formulating the government. And like I said, because I think in my own mind, he has been, you know, in a smaller group trying to control the process. And of course, that's the prerogative of the president. He has to work with people he feels comfortable with and he trusts in helping to formulate the government. But whatever arrangement he has, the process has to be a little faster because you have to form the entire government. If we don't, then you have some lapses and these things were overcrowd, you know, have a backlog of things. Uh, it's not good for us. So there has to be a faster approach in dealing with this. The small group of people, are you saying that they have put the president in a bubble? No, the president has a working team. Not everybody can be on the working team. Okay. The only contribution I will make to that working team, I would say that we need to have, in a structural way, um, strong involvement of the party, the ruling of the unity party. That's what I think. That's the that's what I think needs to be adjusted. But other than that, hey, this president has a responsibility to the government. You know, speak about things like that. Uh, a lot of calls called, oh, Senator, we haven't heard your name yet. Ambassador, we haven't heard your name yet. Where are you going? What are you Look, let me settle this. Maybe I should take the opportunity now to clarify that. And a lot of people called me on that. I said to you guys on the radio, on Spoon Talk, throughout the country, some of us did it because we want to see the country move forward. You know, when I met with him, I met with the president and I showed him what I worked for, I already got it. I worked to change this irresponsible government and bring in a more a new opportunity where responsible people can take over this country and lead. I have achieved that. My objective has been met. So I said to the president, if maybe you don't think I'm, I'm coming with a chip on my shoulder, if you decide that you need me to help you in the government, I will be humbled, both humbled and honored and I would jump to the opportunity to serve. If you think at this point you don't need me in, in helping to form the government, you don't owe me an explanation. What I work for, I have gotten my reward. Now, in politics, it's not just about me. There are a lot of other people who we work with, a lot of other organizations, a lot of other political parties and, part and actors that we brought on board because of our own interaction with them. So in some way, we are also answerable, responsible for their inclusion in helping to move this government forward because they were part of it. They made a decision, they made a choice. You know, when some people decided to stay for their own obvious reasons, other people sacrificed and decided to move to move. The so let me forward. interrupt you on that last line. Sorry okay. to do so. I, I, I beg you, Ambassador. Some people decide to be on the other side, but those are some of the folks the president have brought in, like Sylvester Grisby. That's the president, high school friend. That's the president, buddy from college. He's 75 years old, and the name Sylvester Grisby is not going down well with a lot of unity partisan folks. The name Sylvester Grisby, with all the allegation that you cherry picking names. And uh, let's speak truth to power. It's just not right. I have, I'm saying that because I know I've spoken to folks. The name Sylvester Graceway as a uh, minister of state, it, it, it have enclosed the president. It have separated the president from his people, from the unity party. The name Sylvester Graceway has separated the president from some close folks. And that name alone now causes him to be a problem. That's why you see everything that is happening, happening today with the dragon. And now we're having issues in Cape Man. We have an issue with the army wife. We have an issue with LDC. We have an issue that we can continue to count, to remind the president. If the president were to tell John Balu, the ambassador, that Sylvester Grisbill would be my minister of state, would you have fought the way you fought? If the president were to tell the nation that Sylvester Grisbill from the Unity Party of Madame Salih would be my chief of staff, I believe he was going to, he was going to get a bad reward. So I'm speaking because I know till something can change, 
the name Sylvester Grace Bay, and those that have put the president in that bubble, even from the legislature to the judiciary, to the very cabinet the president trying to form today, we have an issue. What say you, sir? Well, if he has said that, I would have still supported him. Mind you, the president has called for government of inclusion. Inclusion doesn't mean only your partisan or only your people who were with you. It also means people who were not with you, but people who share, who has come something to contribute to the nation building exercise. Now, if you flip the question a little bit and ask me, am I totally satisfied with the way it is being handled? I will tell you no. I think there could be an improvement in the vetting process, broadening the participatory process, bringing in actors who know the actors, who know some of the people who were involved in all of these things. I think there are a lot of room for improvement, but the fact that he has someone that he has a long relationship with, that he has confidence in, look, there's the mystery of the presidency. You, who, who are you or me to judge how they played during the campaign? We don't know what they did. We don't know how they worked. We don't know what happened behind the scene. I can judge it because I wasn't there. I don't know where they come from. I don't know where they were or how they are and why they're here. There are too many questions I don't have answers to. Correct. But I trust his judgment and I respect his choice. He has a huge task to work with and he has to have his strong confidence to be with him. Now, I don't know if this fellow was this way or that way. Nobody can say with absolute, absolute, absolute terms. But one thing I do know, he has trust in him. He, he brings him close to him and he listens to him. And I feel good that he has somebody he's comfortable with. I'm just saying, beyond that, there has to be a bigger circle. Do you I think that comfort the level of the president, Sylvester Grisby, is now taking uh, us in the downward slope? For example, everything I have named, that something is not just moving, the fright that, that, that people think that instantaneously things are going to take a different shape. The biggest one of all is the army wife. Uh, they were blindsided. And, you know, we are beating on LDC, but then again, then, you know, LDC saying that, listen, we have a meeting with the president and everything is okay. Now there you go, B mountains and all the stuff that is happening. Do you think because the president trusts Sylvester Grisby, the Mondams all, therefore the country will go down. The decision that he trusts Sylvester, Sylvester should be, no matter who ever say anything, his minister of state. Therefore, we're having a downward instead of going up. And now the opposition is gaining in momentum. Now, if election is here today, people are angry. I love to say it because of how I feel. I don't care how other people feel. Because I know Jose Yemambuaka. I know this person for since 2017. I know this president. I dealt with him. I sat on the bed with him. I ate with him. But if you have everybody and they are bold enough to speak, like Stanton, they will say because of the group around the president, decisions are going, their decisions are going down and having a very, very detrimental effect on the country and the leadership of Jose Yemabuaka. What I think you are, in a way, exaggerating the situation. I think you are taking out President Buaka's factor. He's the president. You know, President Buaka can be very unassuming. He, he runs a show. You know, he makes his decision. He's the one... Maybe he would seek advice here and there. In the end, he takes the ultimate decision. He makes the decision. He's the person who takes his decision. So he's the president in charge of the government. And so far, those who have been appointed to government, I mean, since I don't know everybody, I can say 90% seem to be by far better than the previous government. So we are already making progress in the formulation of the government. We do expect different results because of the people you've been that are on board. And the president has brought these people. He's made a decision. And he's had people like Sylvester and the rest of them to advise him in the process. So it may not be a perfect situation, but it's already a good start with the names and the people that are coming on board. So let me just say, like I said, the only thing I would probably add, broaden the circle, involve the party a little bit more and just accelerate the process and take charge and that's what needed to be done but otherwise i think they're doing a great job i think already there's hope so 
You Thank you very much, you. Ambassador, and we yeah, love the exchange. We do. Dr. Richardson, Conor Gray, Glennie, when she returned, and Isaac. Man, this is Spoon Talk, and nobody will hold us because we got to speak as we see it. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> for being very careful on the show tonight. <laughs> uh, no, no, Richard I'm, I'm being like you, Stanton. I'm being like you. <laughs> like I said to you, if you ask me if I'm satisfied with the way it's going, I said no. I think it's too slow, and the inner circle is too small. Okay? If, Do I want to question the president's choice on who he brings to his side? He's called for the government inclusion. This is what it means. I mean, if you had tomorrow, I said, do me probably, uh, Mr. Do may probably be, be invited to government. What do we say? That's inclusion. But like I said, just broaden the circle, accelerate it a little faster, you know, and, and bring people who are more familiar with some of the actors who were on the ground. Thank Ambassador you. Biden, Dr. Richardson. I would love to talk to you more about your sensitivity to the drug issues in Liberia. I, I think I want to make the same analogy that you use in terms of a timeline uh, with, with the situation in Kipma. I believe that we can use the same, uh, the same analogy to drug companies, making sure that it tell us percentage of people that we, uh, you know, decrease addiction from, percentage, percentage of people that uh, we give them some kind of vocational skills. Uh, percentage of people, you know, that uh, families that we did therapy with, you know, that are now functional. But I think we need to be more specific in that area. Although, you know, sometimes with human factor, you can be very specific, but I think you can use the same technology in terms of timeline in order for you to give them more money to provide services to people. But, you know, you're saying a couple of things that um, I think it's like I'm having some mixed emotions about them. You say on the one hand, the government is doing fine. I'm rewarded by change. But then on the other hand, how can you be just one change for a change stick and not see through to make sure that the change is impacting the people, which I think ultimately is what you wanted. Okay. But when I hear you, I'm just saying, well, I'm rewarded. I'm hearing for change for change stick. And the second thing I'm hearing you say is that, uh, I want a little bit of the inclusion of the unity party. Can you maybe expand on exactly what you mean? Like include a little bit more inclusion of the unity party because some of us that may not be familiar with the party politics, is that something else that the unity party can be doing or should be doing? Or is that something else President Bucker should be doing in including the party that he's not? The third thing that I heard you say is that um, this is a government of inclusion, but yet and still I want people from Maryland County to be in the comment. So there's some, maybe there's, there's, there's some limitation to inclusion going on here because people of Marina County, according to your standard, are not properly uh, placed in the comment. Yep. Okay, so let's, let's go to your stuff one by one. Let's yes. take the last one so we don't forget. You said it right. President Walker has called for government inclusion. What I'm asking for inclusion, <laughs> you understand me? We have, and I know, and don't get me wrong, I say I know they're going to call names from the Southeast. I know we're going to have our fair share. But like I said, it's reached a point that is getting embarrassing because, hey, we receive calls on a daily basis and some of these things are addressing it. So I'm making this appeal like I've made throughout the inner circles and things like that. Listen, it's about time to start having some of these names people who were very visible coming up. You understand that? Coming up from the Southeast. And this, we owe it to the people of the Southeast. I'm playing my part. And this is what I can do. What I've reached out to them and we'll be having this conversation. I'm not asking for more and then the inclusion that we all speak about. Now let's come to the Unity Party. They are Unity Party being brought on board. I'm not talking about in, in, in pointing people for Unity Party alone. I'm just saying. People need to understand in this country what politics is. You have a political party that feeded a candidate. A candidate, the political party wins the election, the government is for the party. You understand that? So the party has a very important role to play in working with the standard bearer to deliver on campaign promises in a way that we benefit from the legacy accrued from our good performance and we can use that as a political capital and win the next election. So all I'm saying that the party
needs to be poured in the very, I mean, I would be the first to tell you that under President Sir Lee, the party was not included in a significant way. That undermined the party, that broke down the party. And I frowned on it. In all of our executive meetings, she knew I was the, probably the only person who stood up and said that to her face about the way the party was being treated. I call for the party inclusion. I call for the party role in the shared governance of the state. This is politics. The government is not for the president, it's for the party. And so people who are around the president, who are working with the president, good. But the party has a space, and that's all I'm asking that to be respected. Now you talk about whatever, what other issue you raised again? I'm sorry, well, I, was, I just I was, addressed to you. Yeah, I, was, I guess my, my final thought is like you were saying that I'm rewarded change is here. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to change the, the, the government. But I found that kind of interesting mm -hmm. that you are not even, or at least the implication of change. Like, I want change to impact the people. I just don't want a new government, a, a government that maybe that, that doesn't involve the party, a government that may not be as inclusive as including the people of Maryland. I I, I want more. But you didn't, I'm not hearing you say that. You just say, well, I'm happy with change. But then on the other hand, Again. you say, no, 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 no. I think it would be unfair if you just take that and try to run with it. You know, when I met with the president, we fought for a change and we're under obligation to help to deliver on the change. We're under obligation to do that, to help in the process, to deliver. Of course, there are some positions that I would love to have occupied, you understand, to help drive this change that we've spoken about. But it doesn't have to be me. It can be other people. And I had a conversation with the president on some of these. And of course, some of these positions were already out. Like I said, I'm just offering myself, OK? But please, just understand that what I fought for, I already got it. And what I fought for, let's understand it, was a renewed opportunity by which you can have capable people, civilized people, normal people in government, responsible people to take the helm of government and lead, provide leadership. And so far, we have achieved that. We fought for the situation where people like President Buakai, Vice President Kuhn, and others of like minds can come together and deliver. Today, we see that. We have that. Like I said to you, I don't know all of the people appointed to government, but I can safely say, 80, 90% of them already meet my approval. I think they are competent people, they're good, and they can deliver on the good. Places that I could have served, there are people doing it, and I'm sure they can do a fantastic job. What would you have, have like that, sir? So, having said that, and I said to him, if you think you need me, and let me make this clear, you know, most times we get it the other way around. You don't reward me, you don't pay me, to, because of our work I did. You come to me because you need me to help build the government. You need me to help deliver on moving the country forward. That's why you ask me to come and help you. I'm coming in, if I'm asked, I will be going in to help the government. And so that's the way to look at it. So if I'm called, I will be both honored and humbled. If I'm not called, the president doesn't owe me any explanation. I have gotten my reward to have government like this, leaders like this take charge and deliver. So far, we are on course. They're doing a great job. All we need to see now, how it is delivered. All of the things I'm saying is to improve on the packaging so as to make this gift to the Liberian people more pleasant. Thank you, uh, Colonel Gray. You know, Ambassador Abalu, all due respect, as she said, Madam Salim did not include Unity Party uh, in the last, in during her tenure. I think the the flip side, the reverse is, is true today. Ambassador Baka has included all those who have huge stake in Unity Party. So the likes of uh, uh, the managing director, of 
um, say LP, LPRC, the gentleman who was here saying that people like us, all of you guys will be included in government, are mute today, meaning, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, the managing director of LPRC, anyway, who was uh, the party chair or secretary. It was twice. It's um, it's also, I mean, all the party leadership have have been given position, so they could care less about other people now. So it's the other way around. At, at first, Madam Salif care about others and not the party itself. Today, the party has gotten what they want. It's just like the party they replaced the CDC. All of them are positioned now, so they could care less about other people. And um, let's face it, either way, it's not healthy. We're talking about the government of inclusion. To be frank, I would like to see somebody like yourself included. But people are complaining, even the Loma people were disadvantaged and is, is blabbing. Even the Loma people were excluded before uh, Ambassador Todd said, oh, I've not brought in Loma people, so they brought in uh, Dr. Liberty and um, the, the uh, Galamai Kotemai. I'm not sure, but um, everybody is complaining. Even the NIMBA people are complaining. So my question to you <laughs> is that uh, we know government can appoint everybody, but do you think this is a true government of inclusion or it's a government for the, for the party and by the party? This is a more, the most inclusive government you can ever think of. The most, I have not seen a government most more inclusive than this. Okay? Get ready for Isaac <laughs> Doom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a matter of time. Mr. Doom probably might just be called. I mean, he's a very intelligent person who has a lot to offer the country. I know you gave each other a hard time a spoon, but we know him. No, 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 I meant, I meant that. Get ready for him. So my point is, this is a very inclusive government. You know, to the point, if you probably listen to the president's speech, he said partisanship should give way to inclusive government. You know, I would have rather, in my own thing, is a partisanship should accommodate inclusive government, not give way. You see, that is the extent by which the president wanted to have an inclusive government. You understand? So it's very inclusive. And I'm not complaining, uh, Colonel Gray, about unity partisan being brought into the government to work, no. And President Boaka hasn't committed that political sin yet. I'm just saying the political party, unity party, that's a unity party government. Under President Salif, that party was not given a space to share in the governance of the state, not as ministers or that, as the policy share, um, as, you know what I'm saying? Where you, you put in, you have a working, uh, executive working, executive committee working on drugs. Executive committee working on economy. Executive committee working on how to deal with the LEC. Executive committee dealing on many issues, job creations. That's the way the party works. The party found these things and submitted to the president for implementation using his cabinet. That is the way it works. And if we don't do that, if we don't institutionalize the governance of the state, then we're going to have a problem because the president needs the support and he needs the help. That's what I'm saying. So but I, 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 in recent times, you've spoken about the LEC, right? Yes. And, and other issues like that. Some of the issues, for example, we need to talk about. How do you approach it? In my view, and I've listened to some of your views, and you, 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 some of you sounded the same thing. We need to outrightly privatize all of these state-owned enterprises. There's no amount of money, European Union, US government, Millennium uh, Challenge can put in that will save LEC or Water and Seaward or Liptelco or RIA or any of these entities. We need to outrightly privatize them. Because when you privatize them, you give them to people whose business it is to make money 
and they will bring on board themselves, they'll put in the system, they'll bring their smart system, and they will provide service because that's the only way they can make money. So part of your discussions, and like I said, these are some of the things we have the working sessions on it to find a way forward. And that's it, that's the way we need to go. So people need to understand that all of the things, how do you refer to it, Stanton, the tapata or something? I mean, we will go up and down and stay bored down to the fact that government should not be in the business of running entities, money-making businesses. We privatize it. These people pay money, our dividends. We exert oversight over them and we monitor them on how they deliver. That's my opinion on that. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I said, do coming in with a question, but let me just do a sidebar very quick. How help librarians understand uh, how can one determine a government of inclusion for this government compared to the unity party 12 year government since you are praising Madam Salih? No, I'm not saying unity party was not inclusive, the part of Madam Salih government. Look, everybody knows how I feel about President Salih government. She did a fantastic job. She brought everybody. She did it so much to the point that she was a bittersweet to me. I had issues with her yet, but I hold her in high esteem, and she's my, she's my role model in many ways. And she, we, we work together. We continue to work together. She enjoys my support, and I respect her and admire her. Straight, straight to the point. But if we just have to speak in terms of what this um, President Baca is doing now, to the point that he's having, look, we in the party don't even recognize a lot of the people in there, but these are people who work with him, people who supported him, people who made things happen with him. And he owes them that kind of a loyalty and support and recognition of the role play because they had a choice to make. It was so easy to receive tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars from the, the government in place then versus sacrificing to save the country and taking the risk of moving forward. I want to Don't understand. I want to, I want you to help us understand government of inclusion, Ambassador. Right. Why are you saying this government is unique, one of the best, when you talk about government of inclusion compared to any other government? No, because you asked how inclusive was it, whether it was inclusive. You raised the issue just now about Minister Grisby. Can you imagine the first person called about was not even from the party. First person called about was not visible. I mean, he was in his own in a circle. He had his own reason for calling him about. That's inclusive in government. You understand me? And if you want to look at a lot of the other, all of these partners who were there, they were all considered and taken into consideration in the government. And like I said, the vetting process, the president did a great job. I don't want to give it to Grisby. I think the president has control of his government. I think he makes a decision. I think he's doing a fantastic job so far. My only take on it is how can we improve on it? I would like to see it being further accelerated. The pace, the clock is ticking, the work is not waiting for us. So to accelerate it, you have to broaden the cycle of consultation and vetting process. And so I think the biggest partner you can have in this process is the inclusion in a very significant way of the ruling party, of the unity party. To add Thank up to you, what you, Yeah, sure. Uh, Stanton, I know you keep asking the, the I, I call him senator because he was my senator, question about government of inclusion. I mean, he does not believe what he says. He was just saying it for, you know, the issue of politics. The senator does not believe that. So that's going to be something you should waste time on my, in my thinking. Uh, knows from 2017, the uh, vast standard bearer for his party, the Unity Party, was Emmanuel Nungo. Emmanuel Nungo worked in the George Weah government. The senator knows that the vast standard bearer for the Liberty Party was his own brother, Harrison Conway. Harrison Conway worked in the George Weah government. The senator knows that the vast standard bearer for the ANC in 2017 was Mr. Solante. Mr. Solante worked in the CC government and many, many. These are people that did not support President We are first round, second round. Right now, this president has not appointed a single individual that did not support him in either of the rounds. Mr. Sylvester, of course you know that um, Mr. Cummins did not go to the second round, so he supported someone. And you know who he supported. So that is not something you believe. But I want to go to another issue that is fair, right? You know, I was, when I ask you, 
pre previous question, uh, you you know, you just went around answering the question. And I was thinking as if you forgot to know that campaign has long over, now it's governance. I mean, you kept focusing on irresponsible government and, and the government. That time has passed now. In my mind, um, the campaign is over. The people have, have agreed to, to go with the rescue team. But I just wanted to say, you know, the fact that you kept basing on, you take irresponsible government there, we bring people that can do it. It is only the thinking that, you know, it is like once it is not me, it's no one else because I'm the only person that knows it all. One, I'm not the person doing it, then the person that's doing it is irresponsible. But let me say, Senator, um, you know, denying a former head of state VIP treatment in entering the country is not a semblance of a responsible government. You know, the president of a country taking a secret trip outside of the country, it's not a semblance of a responsible government. You know, appointing withdrawal, changing names, other things, it's not a semblance of a responsible government. And I'm sure you also agree with me as well that uh, killing unarmed, peaceful protesters does not represent uh, a responsible government. And I know you will also note that announcing reduction in prices of rice gas when you know that the prices actually increase it's not a semblance of a responsible government i know you know disregarding the law whatsoever by appointing people to positions that are protected by law it's not a responsible government and also you will know a lot even the legal advisor ordering cases being dropped it's not something you will be proud of it's not a semblance of a, of, of a responsible government but my question that I asked you earlier that you didn't answer, I was not asking you of things that happen in campaigning. I am asking you of things happening in governance. Let me pull it another way. Senator, can you tell us, unless you are detached from the reality, which I don't think you are, your people from Maryland County, what have they been telling you concerning at least one action that this government has taken so far, not campaign governance, that had any impacted change in their life from where they were. What action this government has taken that had effect on their own life in Maryland County, positively, just one. Not what happened in campaign, I don't want it. What the government is doing now, that's what I want you to talk about. Well, we can answer you. You know, I receive calls every day thanking me for this government that has already started to announce audits. You know, people have seen their resources squandered, robbed, and pushed them further into poverty. So now the audit is one thing that they're very excited about. So I hope the government follows that through. When you start to see government attracting investor signing and investment deals, people talking about already multi-million dollar deals in the first month of the president's thing when the past government six years could not attract one serious investor. I mean, the people are excited. They tell me, say, wow, Senator, you guys serious. Senator, we're can, we, can we check you right there? Can we check you? Can we check you, please? Oh, Hello. 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 Ambassador, yeah. allow Hello. us, please. You know, and that's what I like that Senator Balu for. You know, we all play this thing in, in politics to remove George Manawia. Which one of the new investment deals that this government have signed? Oh, 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 oh. Stanton, you know, yes, I sir. hold you in very high esteem, you know. Yes, Your sir. media, you guys have won my heart. I mean, you are the most informed. You inform us the most... I mean, if you can tell me you don't know, I mean, then where are we? I'm sure, Mr. Doe, can you please answer that? No, no, this, the reason this why this I don't think that is in the making now. Which one? Oh, yeah. No, 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 I beg you. Well, I beg Mr. Doe. I beg you. Let me. I beg you, Mr. Doe. I, I like to do it from both. Hey, you know, <laughs> and I respect the ambassador. I, I, I seriously, I love you. Whatever you appear on the show, mm -hmm. HPX is not a new deal, though. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about the HPX? Of course. Okay, but it's not a new deal, though. So is it an old deal? Yeah, it, it was. It was an old deal. Uh, this the past government took almost thirty million dollars, and we know the story of that. And actually, they they crumbled the deal. So it's a continuation, of course, to sign up with this government. 
But to agree that this government brought in HPX as a new deal, that's my question and my concern. I know no, it is. No, 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 no. Let's understand this. We're talking about the realization of opportunities. You understand? You had opportunities that you played with, that you, you, you played 419 with the people on. Normally, these guys will pack their bags and leave and take you to court in their host country because most of these things they have linked up to the international courts. Correct. These guys decided, no, we will not leave. We have somebody here that day who has a word that we can rely on. We have a government that has a credibility that we can count on, we can bank on. So they were inspired to come in and further this deal. So I'm just saying to you, that's confidence. It comes with the, the trademark, the product you have, the product, Joseph Buakai, Unity Party, this government, this rescue team, night versus day, good versus bad. They've seen it. So, I mean, you interrupted. I would have gone on. With I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but. Sorry. <laughs> I just went on. But, ask me to, but, to answer the question. Um, <laughs> so, 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 Senator, let me ask you, please. The HPX deal, you and I know, you know, beyond the scenes thing. Do you? have an idea of how much this iron ore they will be taking from Guinea for which they are having deals in Liberia. Do you have an idea at all how much that worth? Do you have an estimated idea? The iron ore that they will be actually taking to go sell for which they won't have deal in Liberia. Do you have any idea how much, how much it worth? How much the iron ore in? Have you done any little research about it? Well, first of all, let's, let's make it clear. That is not your iron ore and that's not your business. What you benefit yeah, I know. from, give me a chance. What we benefit is what we should be concerned about, not what the other person benefit. that their business. We depleted our side of the mind. Those people signed, secretary kept it on mind. Today, the people can handle it. Hopefully, they can manage it properly. What we so, are benefiting Senator, from, excuse me, please. please. What yeah, we are I, benefiting I from. But one minute, just one minute. I think at this point, yes, that's when Stanton will come in and tell you to give me a chance to answer. So let me wait for him to say that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't I want to cut this off. Please, no, I said, hold on, let Ambassador finish his talk. All right, you all right, take out his please. Right. Yes, all sir. Right, go ahead. Yeah. So the reason they're coming to us, because it's by far cheaper for them to build a rail to Monrovia Port than to build it to their country. So we stand to benefit from the spillover of this deal. And we stand to benefit millions of dollars. And we can have a multiple use of these rails. And we can benefit our economy. We stand to benefit. Some people, you know, you say campaign is over. You don't want us to refer to, to your government. But you, you play on this kind of thing and may like be able to almost lose a good deal. But, you know, Stanton, I mean, in part of the inclusive government, I'm sure if I have a chance to even talk with the people recommending to President Buaka, I probably call Mr. Doe a uh, name. He's, he's quite an <laughs> informative person. I know he's compelled to say what he's saying. He's from your country. That's your country. Let me come back to the real issue. Now, Senator, the reason why I ask you about the issue. Earlier on, we spoke about the beer mountain issue. And I then ask you, what are those things you think we need to do before awarding contract with people that come in with all these big, big promises and money? And you mention some of those things. Fast forward just a few minutes later, you are coming back to the same thing that we're talking about. Senator, you and I know that H P X is not going to invest $5 billion in Nigeria. You know, it's, you know this. It's, it's beyond question. HPX is having a deal in Guinea that is going to be worth about 2.9, 2.8, 2.9 billion. What kind of a business is going to be having money that is in 2.9 billion and then be investing in another country where the iron ore even is in 5 billion? Even the person in kindergarten will even live. Now, you, you will not know the reason why the last time it happened the way they did. And the only thing that government had, you know, could get from HPS was around 30, 30, 30 million. And we know today that the only thing that government will get from HPA will be maximum 30, 40 million. You and I know. So the thing is, again, are we just going to sit again and just give concession agreements to people? And then two years from now, we start crying again 
we will not check the little boxes here and there to really be sure that what they are saying is the right thing. I don't think they should be perfect. I would think we should graduate now from the time when people just come with big promises and then we just give it to them. I think we need to be careful. We know that HPX is not having a deal in Guinea that is worth more than $3 billion, but then they are investing $5 billion in a country that they are not even having a deal on. Let's be serious for our people. Let's make the changes. The boxes? Arizona, well, that's what I'm saying. Well, okay, the government did not. So it is okay for us not, not to ever do. Like I've no, always... But, but just, to, be fair for you to stop. Right? The government. We're talking about that. That ambassador answered uh, uh, yeah. asked, then you can come in that to Richard say. Right. So, like I always so, refer to Mr. Comments. Mr. Comments always said, the change we talk about is not just, just having a chance, but real change. If yesterday I was drinking one bottle of water, it was not good, and they took me from there, you want to still drink the same one bottle of water too? I don't think it's fair to our people. Well, I don't know why you're crying foul, you know, why you're crying wolf. You had an opportunity to go through this deal, vet it, accept it or reject it. You threw the ball down, you dropped the ball. You took money from the people and up to today, we still got to account for the money. And so some of these issues, when it's being raised, some of you need to really be ashamed to show your face in public to talk about it. But however, the dry face that some people have in the country, you can excuse them. So what I would say to you, give us a chance to deal with it on our, term, our terms. We will look at it, the merits and demerits. We will go in for it, what is worth, and we will put the people interest first and build our economy. You had your chance, you blew it. Give us a chance to do what we have to do. We were exhausted professionally. <laughs> like we are accustomed to. Thank you. <laughs> you work on it next time. Who? I said, I said, I recommend I said to, to the president. This, this is an this is an ambassador. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I, Isaac is the fact that he's still on spoon with with you know doing such a great job defending the indefensible. I mean, he has something to offer. We can work with him. So, so Ambassador, before we let you go, we want to say thank okay, you for being part of us. Okay, I'll come to you. No, you, you will take the Ambassador Hong Kong Gray, seriously. I, I just want if you go back and you search, Guinea is getting a bigger portion. You know, when Asi said 2 point something billion, I thought he was kidding. Guinea is getting almost 4 billion from HPX compared to Liberia, 500 million. Can you help us understand why? Because... The crux of the matter is they are mining, or oh, they mining. They have a mine that is in Guinea, a virgin mine. We have depleted ours from the side of our border. They are only using us as a conduit to export their the, 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 the minerals. They are building the rail to our port, which is by far cheaper because of the shorter distance they're building it to Conakry. And so with that, we have some profit sharing because they're transiting in our place. They're building the infrastructure that we can use. They're using our ports that will pay export charges. So we stand to benefit and accrue millions of dollars from this deal. And that's the economy. But if you look at, if you look at everything, because it's a big broad uh, a diagram on the map, Guinea, Liberia, portion of, you know, if you look at that map, uh, you find uh, the diagram they will still mine from Liberia some way, somehow. Everything is not from Guinea and saying we are only asking you for the way to take our iron ore out of Africa. They still having some portion that they will be mining from. Am I correct? Because I'm looking at the diagram here. Well, I'm, I don't know the details of the concession yet and this agreement, but like I said, like I said to you, these guys are dealing with the mine in Guinea. That much I know. And this is not just today. People should bear in mind, this discussion has been going on for years now because they had options. Cote d'Ivoire has been trying to get them to build the, the thing through Cote d'Ivoire. These guys have been marketing, managing these things for a long time now. This deal is here before us. Even during um, President Salif and these discussions have been in the air. So today we've managed to take decisions on them. 
because we had somebody who had the political will to deliver on certain things and keep and get the economy turning. You can eat your cake and have it. Today, you have an opportunity by which we can partner, can share, profit share in the resources of gaining just by transporting and building our infrastructure here at their expense. I think it's a good deal for like It is. It, it is, it is a good deal. And I will concur. And I will say to you that the issue is that once we are at the level to, to speak on the HPX, knowing very well, these are some of the things that put Senator Tua on sanction today. Uh, take the 30 million dollars. Uh, he and George, we are in the rest of them. Take the 30 million dollars and tell the people, say, go and something yourself. Now, the American government came down hard. And, and as they can attest to it, because as they know very well, after they took the 30 million, they didn't do anything. They refused the folks. And now Senator Tua went on sanction. Senator himself said it. Uh, on one of his uh, of, of program. Colonel Gray, I think it's the right step, but just to say it's a new deal, new deal for this, for this new government, but it's been around, like you said, and uh, because the government is responsible and thinking that they can deliver for Liberia, so it's a good thing. But Samuel Tua, because of the HBX money that he stole, he and uh, Asado and the rest of the government then, that's why he's on sanction. Uh, Colonel Gray. Yeah, I think uh, this is a low hanging fruit. I I don't see why the late Israel government of Mr. Weir could not pick that fruit and, and share it among everyone. It's a low hanging fruit. Uh, but let me, before I ask you my question on the same issue of the port, let me uh, bring to Isaac's uh, attention that Ambassador Solante resigned from the ANC with the hope of becoming U.S. Uh, U, like ambassador to the U.N. He joined the CDC, but never realized that dream. He languished in the CDC, was never given a job, unless Mr. Isaac Duke is ready to tell us what job uh, Mr. Solanta got prior to the end of that government. I'll wait for, for when, when he closes, maybe he can address that issue. But to you back, uh, Ambassador uh, 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 Bali, our national port, let's go back to our neighbors. They are thriving because they've made importation of goods and services within their ports, their various ports, so easy. We have made our so cumbersome. We used to be the star of Liberia because of, of the of the region, because people refer to our port as free port. Today so it's all but free. It's not free at all. Let's make it. And and if you you are talking about people coming to uh, install a railway you know, access to our port. It sounds like something very great that will help, you know, exportation of goods and services even better for us. But are you satisfied with the with our port currently the way it's structured? Or if you or, or we should we should go back to uh, where we were No hold on hold on the ambassador is in darkness. I don't know whether you can hear us. Is that LEC just left? I think so. <laughs> it left the ambassador in darkness. Wow. Let's see if we get the ambassador back. Can we ask him to tell us how Ambassador Tolonte became uh, uh, was hired? I want to give a quick. Ambassador, can you hear us? I don't think so. Isaac. Back for LEC. Yeah, the internet went off too. Isaac, though. But Isaac, you get internet. Why you not answering, my man? Can you hear us, man? You can be so relaxed on the show, man. Minister Doe, there you go. All right. So, so Nelson, come let's wrap this thing up. Ambassador uh, went off. We hope to have him again. But let me say this though. So tomorrow, Francis Dopo, well, Senator Francis Dopo will be our guest tomorrow. On Monday, we'll be having the uh, newly uh, confirmed information minister, Jerry Limick Pierre. He will be our guest on Monday. Jerry Limick will be our guest on Monday. On Saturday, we're going to have Prophet Key on Saturday. Uh, I want to say that as always, you join us. I want to play this Delon tape. You know, sometimes we go back to these things to remind ourselves. They don't spoke about this same B Martin. Uh, you know, like, folks, it, it's not a joke, right? And people can just take their eyes off the ball. That's our word for Ambassador, Ambassador Badu to listen to. But uh, the Liberians, Go back in history. People have been speaking about these things. Let's listen to Delon. 
Has the country constructed? Question. Medical health construct. The government will cause the company to construct it. In 10 years, has the company constructed? Not renovated, not rent. Has they constructed a medical facility in a production area for its employees and the community? Question. But what I don't know is that they have uh, health facilities in the concession area. Let me ask a question again. Has the company constructed? I'll say what they have. The plain language here, they should construct. Have they done so? Question. Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that they have yeah, offering yeah. medical facilities to the workers. Yeah. I know when you have some. You, you see, I don't think that question was even close to being difficult to answer. Uh, uh, and Nelson, can you can you come on, Nelson? Can you play the entire thing? I like to listen to everything. You know what Isidro was asking? That all this sweet, you know, uh, quotation are made in those uh, in those in those uh, bid for for those uh, concession, but when they get it, they don't never. Um, yeah, but but, but, but so, so 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 when I couldn't agree, couldn't agree. Nessa, is that all of it? Can you play all of it or you send, upload it, okay. the rest of that? Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm getting the rest of it. Thank you. But but couldn't agree. This is, I think, 20 something, 2022, 2019 or something. They don't just ask the same question people are asking today. So what people think that there was something strange? That, oh, we never knew it, boy. Oh, the people just started protesting today. Uh, you know, we get we get ambassador back. In, ambassador, uh, let's bring you back. Thank you again for coming. Sorry for the for the uh, money captain delay because that that delay is on money captain. By the way, your dear <laughs> friend money captain. Sorry for the money captain delay. Uh, uh, I I want to play this the long clip, ambassador, to understand that they don't been speaking on this thing. Not to just single him, but he an other senator though. What what people think that it should be a surprise? That, oh, this thing just happened. We didn't know about it. Let let listen to the long clip, and uh, and I also want you in your important statement, if you can, please, to speak to those that are planning to protest against LEC, uh, because they seem to be so tired. You know, they have reached out to us, and uh, the scheduling of date and time to go protest from the headquarters in West Point to Bush Island and all over demanding the president intervention and this government intervention. I know you people listen to you and I want you to add to my voice and say protest will not be the answer, especially at this time. And I hope that we can uh, ask them not to. But let me play this later on, quick. Has the country constructed? Question. Medical health construct. The government will cause the company to construct it. In 10 years, has the company constructed, not renovated, not rent, has they constructed a medical facility in a production medical for health employees? The government will cause the company to construct it. In 10 years, has the company constructed, not renovated, not rent, has they constructed a medical facility? In a production area for its employees and the community. Question. But what I don't know is that they have health uh, facilities in the concession area. Let me ask a question again. Was the company constructed? Ask them what they have. The plain language here, they should construct. Have they done so? Question. Go. No. I know when you have something, I know when the law, the plain language of the document, the agreement, it is that they may construct, they said it's sharp. If they don't do it, they will be cost to do it. Have you caused them to do it since they didn't do it? I say, what are the renting workers? They should construct. Have they constructed period? I mean, question. You want to answer No, not for you. No, no. You're not representing them. No, no, no. You're talking about a new facility like a, like a medical 14 hospital. 
the, the two of our, I mean, the medical doctor who accompanied me when I went to Turkey, um, thanks to him, you know, he's, he's performing a lot of medical services. Yeah. Please, the question is as simple. The first level of compliance and performance. In 10 years, have B. Martin constructed a medical facility in keeping with the current agreement? We regret. We really want to have. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Take it down. You know, thank you, Nelson. Take it down. You know, that's what I wanted to meet to, to remind Delon we revert. They don't love this one we revert. So they just said to him, we revert. And up to now, Ambassador, they said reverting because they did it. And the question was on point. And I like what you said. Joe, we had an opportunity. So in your closing, Joe, we had an opportunity to bring in to hold B Mountain. He had an opportunity to bring in HBX. He had an opportunity to hold Asira Mittal, Western Cluster, and all these different uh, 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 companies. But guess what happened? They blew it out. From that day, I knew that Joe Well was never ever going to win election in Liberia because they couldn't answer the simple question. We want to say thank you for joining us, Ambassador John Balu. Thank you always for accepting our invite. And uh, a beautiful show today from your end. Uh, as you leave us, I uh, will ask you again, do LDC is a problem? We saw a typical example, you went in the dark. Uh, but we stay asking librarians, please do not hit the street to protest. I think solution will be here soon. What say you, sir? Thank you. Well, to deal with the LEC situation, you know, I just switched to generators now. And why it may affect the individual um, so uh, severely because of the heat and all of that and the everyday life, can you, you can imagine what it's doing to the businesses. I mean, we have, I'm in the accommodation business. You find a small facility, you spend about $6,000 a month now on electricity bill. You know, because of fuel, because you can have LEC. LEC, when it was there, was half the cost. Now it's a few and all of that. So, yes, if people are planning to demonstrate, it is their right to do so. And it is out of their own frustration, they're finding a way to express it. That's part of the democratic process. But what is even more important than the fact that we know that they want to demonstrate or the fact that they say they want to demonstrate is the fact that we know they intend to demonstrate. So right now is the time to move in and engage them, to hear them, receive a petition from them, and work on it in a way that alleviates their fears. Because at the end of the demonstration, they will be presenting a petition. Now is the time to engage them. Again, to be proactive and not reactive. We know what they're planning. We know why they're doing it. And that should be something that we empathize with. So we should now move in and engage them because to demonstrate is not the way. People demonstrate when they have no other option. Yes, sir. So if you have an option now to engage them, then you're not gonna, you're gonna prevent it. People demonstrate, people fight for their rights. If you give them the right, you deprive them of a reason to fight. So I think we need to be proactive. And again, the solution to LEC, privatize it. Privatize it. I don't know why the international partners are insisting on keeping the management team over a system that is lacking everything from infrastructure to system to managerial you know, level, everything. These people lack logistics, they lack vehicles, they lack everything they need. They're not even properly compensated. You have few expatriates, you have few people in the leadership that make unimaginable sums. For what? A bad product? So the best way out is for this government to revisit the whole arrangement and privatize it. There is a reason why even the biggest countries in the world, the greatest economies in the world result to privatization. Get it off our hands, let us focus on receiving accruing our dividends and serve our people public services. Whether it is water and sewer, whether it's LEC, whether it's Lepteco, whether it's RIA, whether it's MTA, the Transit Authority, privatize all these things. 
all the government state owned enterprises, privatize it, get our hands off it, let these people recruit the competent Liberians, put in the system because they invest in the money to have reason to protect it and provide the services, knowing the only way they get paid is by services. Right now, a lot of our state owned enterprises have been subsidizing the budget process. Why should we do that when they should be contributing to the budget? So we need to privatize it. But like you said, in conclusion, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I always have a great... The National Port Authority issue, I ask you. Sure. Even that. They need to privatize the Port Authority. You need to. Look, you can even start to think outside the box and privatize JFK and privatize the Redemption Hospital, privatize Totmo High. You just tell people, privatize the school, privatize it. That is the way of the future. You set in these things, you tell the people the level at which they can go and not move. And when we want it subsidized, we will subsidize it to keep it at a minimum rate. But otherwise, all of these revenue generation entity should be put in the hands of experts, people who invest. And that's the way we will make more money by privatizing it. They will make money, we will make more money, they will have better service, it will supply our economy, we will attract investment and we will encourage manufacturing and as a result, export. That's the way to build your economy. If we don't want to do it, we're just wasting time because eventually we're going to end up there, either today or tomorrow, but the only way out now in a society where we lack basic everything is to go for, buy, prioritize and give us time to secure ourselves. So I just want to thank you. I think uh, President Boakai government is doing a great job in, in nominating people. These guys, they may not be some of the people we want, some may not be some of us, but they're doing a great job. I think already there's a great improvement in the thing. The fact of going forward now with the audit, it's very important. It's giving the people the sense of relief. Just imagine all of the government agencies and entities. entities. You're finding minimum 300 excess names, 400 that people don't need that just blood at the payroll ghost names everything so recklessly handled this is unveiling everything and giving us chance people are starting to see what good governance can provide my only take on all of this is to broaden the the, 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 the scope of the vetting process the inclusiveness accelerate the process of completing the government because it's getting to be a burden on a few that have been appointed it's important to have in the same spirit of inclusiveness let us start to hear some of the names on the Southeast. Like I said, it's getting embarrassing. We've been answering too many calls. We have to speak on behalf of the people we've spoken to. We owe them that much. And we went to them, we spoke to them, we owe them. At least they heard it. We've sent this message to the inner circles in the vetting process. They're going to call the names. We know they're going to call the names. We just say, don't wait it all the way to the end. Call it now. Let's attention in the country. What's and left? What's left? Move, yes. And as we move forward, let us be optimistic. Let us deal with this crisis. Give the government a chance. Those of you who have your grievances, before you go demonstrate, reach out and see what a responsible government will do. And of course, if they don't meet it, if they drag their feet, if the only way to get their attention is to demonstrate, and of course, then you have no other option. But until then, I want to thank you for the opportunity. May God bless us and save the state. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador John A. Ballard Jr., as always. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They, they you know a wonderful program today, Dr. Richardson. Uh, ooh, the ambassador spoke. I, I, you know, I miss Maxwell today because the ambassador spoke in Maxwell tone. You know, they don't, they don't want to play it safe, you know, but we know what's up. And uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Dr. Richardson, Ed, and Isaac, will I ever, you think I will ever be calm? <laughs> there sometimes I, I, I cannot do well, it was okay. Uh, uh, let me just be quiet. No, Color it, wouldn't, gray. it wouldn't be you. I, I'm sorry, I gotta leave. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But Dr. Richardson, do your closing answer. You tell all oh, I will just I will be quiet because no matter who you are, what took place today, man, that's that's bad though. And what yeah. took place today, I think people can say, Let's know what they don't say, just listen to Dylan Clay. He has a basic common question. Some two and the rest of them couldn't answer and they say we'll revert. And that's what they don't took that war from revert. <laughs> and, but but it's bad for our country. And yet we are today, people are dying. No hospital after the beating that to Richie see.
people are dying. Man, talk to us, man. This too. Yeah, um, I'm I I have to leave, so I'll just give my clothes. So you leave me with I said do it again. Yeah, yeah actually in good hands, brother. I said do is is good people. Um, you know, I and I I will start with him. I said I hear your point and I agree with your point that just because something was wrong in the past, it doesn't mean that a government should continue the wrongdoing. But I think sometimes you neglect to speak about how that wrongdoing have implication for resetting. So because you only look at it like, oh, our government did something wrong before. So that doesn't mean that this government should continue to do the wrongdoing of our, our, our government. But I think it would be nice to itemize some of the ways that the wrongdoing of your, your government have contributed to the resetting of this government. So I just wanted to say that I agree with you. Um, I also want to just tell uh, Senator Vabla, thank you very much for her speedy intervention. I know she's new on the job and it's a, a interesting way to start a job. Just, you know, you got to hit the ground running. Uh, she's been working as she said, but I want to tell her, thank you so much uh, for intervening. And I, you know, I look forward to her coming out with some great uh, resolutions to assist the people in Cape Mount. I also want to extend my condolence to the people of Cape Mount, uh, especially those who lost a family member or several family members we don't know yet, or those who family members were injured. Um, I want to go back to something that we started off talking about, which was the LDA uh, that Senator Balu, Balu started talking, Ambassador Balu started talking about the drug and alcohol situation and our problem. I'm glad that he's championing championing this cause. I I I think that it's a good thing. I, I actually just want to ask him to include which he did speak about, but be more inclusive. The government has a serious role to play in terms of the legal system, the law. They have to revisit the law. They have to look at the prison system. The community has a role to play. Uh, money, the, the budget, the economy has a role to play in this. Mental health, medical doctors, the education system, the different the immigration system. Those are all the stakeholders, I believe, that need to come to the table and actually brainstorm different ways that they can prevent drugs from coming into our country. And he asked Spoon to extend, so he asked you to, you know, brainstorm way to be more involved in this drug situation, whether it's opening the phone lines for people to call in and, and tell their experience to bring awareness. Awareness is a serious piece in the drug system as well. And then, of course, we, we, we finally, I want to talk about Dylan's tape. I believe this tape was when he was when when the people in B Mountain was looking to renew their contract. It is evidence to me that people need to be fired. I think that is the first step. I, I know I keep on asking for people to be fired, and some people think I'm very insensitive. I'm not thinking about the jobs of the people who will lose their job. I mean the family members, the children of people who will lose their jobs. But let's think about the people who now are in the situation of B Mountain, the workers you know, who go to work under uh, unsanitary conditions. The workers who don't even get uh, their rights, who rights are being violated, okay? And, John, and Senator Dina asked an interesting question. He asked, has their com the company constructed health facility in the past 10 years as stipulated by the contract? And that's, this was a while back, oh, that's the answer that we didn't get. He asks again and again, has the company constructed health facility as stipulated? He didn't, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, as stipulated by the contract. It was a no. We also saw today how insensitive the people from Turkey came to Liberia and they were building houses that were not even culturally sensitive to the way that we like to build houses or the people in Cape Town like to build their houses. Where in the world will a librarian go to Turkey and try to do things the librarian way there? And the Turkey, the Turkish men say it's okay. Nowhere, nowhere. Then you have to say that, oh, they continue, they didn't stop after the people complained to them. Oh, they continue to build the houses so somebody over uh, uh, ride them or overruled the, the idea of, of them halting building the houses. I never heard this whole this thing yet before. They're building people houses, they even give them backyard, giving them those small squeezer. And you know very well in the villages that people like their spaces. They build their homes where there's enough air, breeze coming, where they can sit down and relax. If anybody been to a, a, a village before, you know how it is. 
And then we went to the military. Who, where? In Turkey, you think the military, like, bro, go to Turkey to go do some kind of business there. And then, you know, the, the, the military will come to, inter to intimidate our people. No. The military is there purposely for intimidation purposes. So that people can shut up. They won't rise up. They won't talk. Uh, they won't express themselves. So to me, I believe that the government need to act. They hold things that way for investigation. That way for yes, investigation is fine, but there's some things you can do right now to 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 eliminate uh to make the situation better for the people. There's some things they can do right now, and the government needs to do it. This whole thing about investigation, me, I tie in because there's too many investigation in the book that <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Don't laugh. I say I'm not talking for you yet. You will not use my mouth to chew your pepper because there's no, you know, here, no tales of these investigations because we're adding, we just keep on adding to the investigation. So I believe that our government need to represent the people. They need to make things right for them. They need to look at all the way how this be mounting. Government have been insensitive to the people of Cape Mount County, taking billions and billions of, of dollars as a result of our mineral through the back door every single month, day or whatever, it is it is, it is, is just not heard of. It, it makes me sick. So once again, my condolence goes out to the people of Cape Mount County. Thank you so much, Senator, for allowing me to, to give my closing early. Dr. Richardson, thank you as always. We'll see you tomorrow again. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, Dr. Richardson. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Have a good night. See you. And so while we the men stay on, like you know, we the men always remain. Uh, those of us that serve in the military, uh, it's time for us to go. Listen, guys, I want us to take questions. Let's listen to the Labyrinth people. Gonna agree. You know why? Because when we do this thing, especially what happened today, you know, today in Grand Cape Man, it's, it's, it's a very, very serious issue. Yeah, but I want to say what? I was just saying, why don't just close up from there and then we stay on the show, take questions, take calls, and things and go from there. Why don't you think so, at least? I would think. No, because when we, take, let, we can take a few calls and we just close, right? Because when we close, we close. We got about 20 more minutes to go. So let's just take a few calls. Nelson, can you come on? But I actually thought the, the, this issue about the B mounting is serious. I appreciate that. I, I do. I appreciate all for even calling. Tomorrow we have uh, Francis Dopo, the senator. And then we'll speak to the information minister on Monday. You know, this is. this is a serious time in our country. And to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm not pushing anything, but I disagree with some of these decisions that we, we investigate with. Now, now, the Army web investigation is day 17. In Labrador right now, it's after 12, right? So it's day 18. We still waiting for results. Are you sure it's not, it's not over yet, the two weeks? The two weeks is over. It's day number 18 now. So the two okay. weeks is over. Okay. That's what I'm saying. It's a yeah. two weeks. The two weeks over day number 18. Uh, and when we stay counting, when will we have some comprehensive, the entire report to tell the Labyrinth people what's happening? And, 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 and besides so also, uh, the, also the issue about LDC again, you know, the young met uh, money captain is people tell us what's happening. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to say this thing because the government owe it to the people, you know, uh, but you want to say something real quick? Let's get each other 10 seconds now. You and Conor Gray don't go to the phone line. Yeah, no, I was only talking about the overall situation. Now, uh, as we speak, we got people died, and we've not got anyone yet being held for questioning or for anything. I mean, the issues that have been there, uh, they just start up today. That's one part of the story. And then the other one has to do with government's own response towards the protest actions that was there. I was reading front page Africa's story for tomorrow, and they said the protest was largely peaceful until allegedly, according to them, armed men from the south of either the LNP or the military, one of the two, opened fire. I thought it was crazy. Why who we resort to a place? where even the first protest under this government who resort to killing of unarmed civilians. When have we reached to that? We have had years come years ago where we <laughs> want people dying from COVID. Oh, that's, that's it. That's, that's it. One, 
That's it. That's it. That's it. Are you listening up? You cut a great. Yeah. Are you listening to Acid though? Yeah. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I'm being real. The other side has to do with the people's phones. We should stop. Are you serious? I said, are you serious tonight? You want to go out <laughs> and protest killing people? Are you if serious? You say, if you say serious, that would be a very big okay. understatement. We, 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 can, we, can, we can come from another <laughs> way, though. But are you serious that the I, protest... I, 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 always, now, I always want to talk about the situation happening today. But I know you want to go back, George Weah's time. Let's go back there. But, yes, but, but I understand myself now. I beg you, Minister, do wait now. Wait, wait. With a few times we got left, let us understand myself. It was a bad day today for the government. It was, I, I, I can say that it was a bad day. So what did the president do? He called for the justice minister of the minister of Alliance, my, or how you know women pay, just a minister of my own papé, consider us one. He called on Gregor Coleman. He called on everybody for and said, you're opening an investigation. Don't you think now like we're holding the, the government, say two weeks have gone uh, on this, you know, on this army web, give us time, two, three weeks on this investigation, and let's just wait and see. But for you to say, well, the government did nothing, he called an emergency ministerial meeting, man. Come on, ask Probably. it. Probably you didn't get me. Maybe maybe you are listening no, no, to no, something. I, I got you. I got you. No, no, no. You were looking to call me. So you were trying to damn a number. So you didn't really get me. No, but, what, why am I calling you on the show? I'm not concerned. My 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 statement did not mention what happened after the incident. What I said was people died from so far the first protest action against the government. That's what I said. I'm not saying what the president did later. No. And I know you wanted to go back to George We are time. And I can be here proudly say I can be one one minute. George We are was president for six years. Good six years. There were protests upon protests upon protests upon protests. Not a single of them led to somebody dying or to military or police or anybody shooting gun here and there. But I'm only saying the first time, the first of its kind led to people dying. Live bullets being fired. Is I, that I it? Let me let me let me remind you a little bit. Let me remind you. One of the first times uh people protested against this government was the army wife. I am I I one 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 of the first times I didn't say the you first time. Party to his chairman, but uh Mr. Luther Tape had one of the largest demonstrations against its mm -hmm. own government. Logan. Nobody died. People at the um, UL, uh, the UL, yeah, they were one all around, the, around their heads and everywhere. So to say the first time, it's, no, no, no. It's, one of it's the first I mean, uh, it's, it's one of the first protest actions against the government. You get a fair chance to talk that. No, but he's not saying what I said. No, but give him a chance to talk. Let him finish. So, so far, this government has demonstrated more willpower to negotiate up to the point where people are thinking sometimes they cave in. So yeah. the temperament yeah. of this government is nowhere comparable to that of Mr. Weir. This so thing that they cave don't, make, in, you're right. don't make any comparison with, between them. Look, Ambassador Bucker has moved to handle some of this situation in a most uh, civilized and somber manner. What happened today was a spillover from you guys. You should not have deployed armed men, more so the armed forces of Liberia. Um, maybe they should have looked at it um, from a different so perspective. So your military man could agree. If it's a spillover from CDC, why now our government can just take those military guys from there? Now, I agree with you, totally. We should recall the army. The army is not supposed to be there. Matter of fact, exactly. Maybe, maybe the army is idle. That's why some of us, the army is too idle. That's why I say we're not fighting war anymore. Nobody's going to invade us. We're not at war with each other. Why not deploy the army into something more productive? Let's fight hunger, for instance. That's a that's a warfare. Why not get it involved in agriculture? Get it involved in, 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 in vegetables and fruit and something. What are they doing? You are right. So 
We have to look at exactly. you know in our direction. I could not have been, I could not have been head of the army. I do I do I do I do revive a very so this is a serious thing though for the for the great for the great this is very serious and shameful it is. It is. that it our is. military right. men our military men right. killing our own people and, and I hope this investigation will you let us go war. Send them, uh, let us yeah. go war. Yeah, I hope that I hope this investigation will yield some results because uh, we we'll come. Listen, people want to protest every second, but let's just bring that open the phone line. You got to think. I said I was lying when he said that the government never protest protested. Uh, thank you. All right. I don't think I said was right when you said the government was being the peaceful, most righteous government with no protest. We saw what yeah, I can't speak to the university. You know, are you listening to that? Are you li li listening to our show here? Can we take calls from Liberia Nelson? I said those saying that a government was the best government at water protests. And, you know, and, when you it know, comes to the issue of peace in the country and when it comes to the issue of security, I'm sorry. It's okay you can have talking points. But listen, with what has happened in the country so far under this new leadership, President, we have six years. They're not bringing up those. Uh, AF, uh, celebrations never cancel any day. It did. Yes, on this. Yes, you go to the lab. Yeah. yeah. Talk, 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 talk. They were giving water uh, and food to people on the street. I say, I right. say, actually, yeah. to tell you the truth, I say, actually, you know, met George Weir today. George Weir accepted the letter of resignation from Mobile Model and he replied Mobile Model. And they appreciate I say, for being on Spoon Talk, you know, and uh, the two offer mm -hmm. from Spoon to serve as consultant. So everything now you see as you're doing is to actually do the work of personal we are. And this so is another thing. So uh zero triple five one zero one zero seven five we have the um the bill the line I'm gonna post up huh? here take our first call Hello, you live your name and where you call from? Yeah, the PA internet Hello. bill. They gave me a message. Sure. Hello. <laughs> Hello, you live. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're live. Let's hear you. <laughs> All right, this is this is also the legend we say. This it's so such a good thing, you know, when you have discernment and you listen to people like as they do. I'm so befuddled, you know, everyone who worked in the government, you know, that was ran by a semi literate George Mia who could not, you know, discern the simple things, the guys who profess to be educated or intelligent a bunch of buffons because yes a man who just professed on this he was that's not that 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 you need a black person out then he started insulting man that's it 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 yeah, hello. Okay, let's hear you. You're live. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> you said what's your name? Lucini. <laughs> okay, Lucini, go ahead. Let's hear you. Thank you very much. Program. Uh, no, Lucini, your, your line is now okay. Please change your location and then you can call back. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Yes, sir, you're live. Let's hear you. Yeah, uh, say good evening, the school family, and I'm D. Magnum. I'm calling from Dubu. Please go ahead. Yeah, first, I want to say sorry to the family I love, that love her, to the, I mean, grandkids, ma. But you know, actually, like, well, we lack of something, we, we lack of uh, key for each other. I can love me to be making decisions that will not be in the interest of the common people. A typical example, labor men will do things and say, yeah, leave it. Nothing much will come out of it. It's so sad to say today, um, people went there to kill people. But I just want to say to Joseph Barra government, we all voted for him. Thank you. We still, we, to conclude, now we're still pushing the idea, but we want him to do the right thing that we all will not be pushing tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's take Thomas Kume. Thomas, go ahead. You're live. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, I'm Thomas Kume calling from the car one. Go ahead. So, firstly, I want to uh, express my sympathies to the uh, bereaved uh, family, those who lost their life in Grand Cape Mount. And 
uh, that 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 was going to be um, that wasn't going to happen if uh, those guys that who went there and started shooting, though the, the company was losing some properties, but I think um, the 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 ERU or who's uh, the entity that went there, the guys uh, you could use the tear gas, and you know they just burst a crowd and shooting at the people lives with this. I think that was uh, not necessary. The government need to really investigate and take action. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we take another person from here. Hello, you're live. Good evening. Yes, sir. Let's hear your name and where you call from. Well, my name is Jared. I'm calling you from Abel Files. Okay, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. You know, let me put them. The ad that was can you the can ad. you walk away from the radio or just reduce the volume? Please do that. Then I will I will bring you back on. Just just make the adjustment. I'll bring you back on. Hello, you're live. Your name and where you call from? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we are live. Let's hear you. Yeah. Um. I want to partake in the show. Yeah, you are live. Now. You are live on the show now. Let's hear you, man. Ah, uh, well, maybe the only program I own. I'm, I'm saying live, but I'm... somebody please lower the TV for me. Wow. Hello, hello. You are live on nice the show. You? Yeah, you are live on the show. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'm the one I call. I, I keep calling only one issue. Okay, my sympathy to the people from Grand Cape Man County for what happened today. I'm so sorry for the incident, but I got problem with Ase Dose, uh, there were no killing in the government when they used to protest. They used to get put water and food. That's a lie. We wash everything. Actually, my name is Amanda Spence. I'm calling from New York. That's a lie. Okay. All right. So what I want to say, I come back to address the same issue the other day about the drugs issue in Liberia. Okay? The thing is, Kevin taking they put a rehabilitation center, one thing, but how, when they get out of the rehabilitation center, what are they going to be doing for survival to live their life, you okay. know, to contribute towards the economy? Thank you. So my, um, my suggestion is to build a place for them, Get them clean, train them, like make them to learn tree and stuff that when they get out, okay. they'll be able to contribute towards the economy. It's very Th important because you carry the man to rehab the stand up from there, you can be right back in the street. Thank you very much, ma'am. Let's let's hold you there and uh take another call. Thanks a lot. We appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Um hello, you're live, your name and where you call from. Good morning. Yes, sir. Let's hear you. No, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for speaking on the phone. Uh, thanks also to Mr. Bro. This is Oscar. We are from the good town this morning. You know, uh, uh, what happened yesterday is bad. You know, we don't support the idea. We dislike it for us. So I think that brings you some of all we need to learn how to, you know, follow what the government says, because I think it will be necessary to follow what the government says. Once it comes in, you express your request to the government, and government say, okay, we look into the issue. I think we need to hold on, but uh, sometimes to go with violence, you know, protest, and some, some people need to protest. They may not come without people, mark, they will put violence. So I think, please, bring people with to try Thank to you. find that in doing such a thing, because the random necessary for us sometimes because we who knows we are doing anything but I cannot suffer and so please I beg you know or to tell me our heart that if we have in mind the government the government can wait thank you I think GMB our president our good leader to see how they are able to come to the EU or library to want to come out like, oh yes this is nice of what we left what we want for you the food to do for us, we should do what on speed it with the investigation, you know, to, to see how that thing and we won't smooth it with whatever the hard problem on in mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's take another person. Hello, please go ahead. You're live. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. 
I want to say sorry to the degree from the and we strongly condemn the action today. But I'm blaming the advisor to our government, special the security advisor. You know, I didn't tell you that he allowed me to go that thing. This was sent different people set up for the settle that situation. So somebody lost my life at the age of 21, 22, it just happened. And let me come to my own brother. When when the actual do start to speak on issue in Liberia, look, after do they don't to Liberia, you call the other guy, or when sometimes when somebody frustrate people and people frustrate them, they don't have where address the issue. I don't look at me addressing to be get all irritated. It's very bad. Yeah, thank you. Very, very bad. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll take the last maybe two calls and then we'll wrap up. Hello, yeah. Uh, yes, you're live. Your name and where you call from. Uh, my name is Mohammed Musa Dore, and I call you from Bomi County, specifically, from the district. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Uh, you see, Liberia, we need to change. If there will be the other country around the world, we need to change from our bad behavior. How can a country look at military and expand the present era to suppress their own people, people in the interest of some high profile government officials getting their own, you know, service be to be done? I think it's very bad. And so, like, we disease on this kind of act if our people is or are to live good, better life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Mr. Do, your, your leg go up? <laughs> uh, you want to ask me that kind of question? Well, I'll talk again. I'll talk <laughs> 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 Hello. 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 Hello, you live. <laughs> We need to look at it again because the past government, things are happening there, and they are complete, the workers are complete, and no one will pay attention. So, for the, I don't know how you are, you to go further, that will run a part in the audit. Thank you. So, I can tell you when look, let us, let us also know our things that people continue to talk around here. Look, professional company in the country, if they have a tell the ability, you never believe they get a little thing. For Thank you. example, Firestone. Firestone is contracting almost all the division. And uh, those divisions contracting, they are all your level. But, that the government will be affected. We agree those are what you need to the government and allow you to get the other benefit so that free medication. medication. Thank you, sir. Definitely. All because the company will limit their liability. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I mean, thank you, Nancy. Um, thank you very much. Let's do our closing. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening uh, on my end. Five minutes yeah. of five. Thank you, Nelson. Nelson, thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Let me thank you, Conor Gray. My people. Let me you will stay in that dark smoke, Conor Gray. What say you? Let me the man in the dark. Well, if you have the food generator, we'll go do the generator and come back. Conor Gray will be speaking. No, I leave this for you. All right, Conor Gray. Why? You know, like like many as have, have, others have done. Let me let me extend my condolences. Uh, to the bereaved family of those who lost their lives um, in Cape Town, they are my people, uh, and and I know definitely my people are not they're not the type that was that will advocate against against authority unless they they are really cornered and government fail to listen, and this is exactly what you will get. Um, I'm not inciting anybody to, to stand up against authority, but sometimes when you seem to be helpless, of course, you're left with nothing but, but to stand for your right. 
And these people um, are not doing anything bad. They're only asking that what you promise us, give it to us. And uh, my hope is that um, um, the new administration under Ambassador Bukai will step in and really compel these people to abide by some of the, the contract agreement that, you know, um, that put them in place in the first place. If you can't do that, if you don't have the decency, like Dylan was asking, Dylan was asking a very good question. You promised to build house half for the medical facility. You have people yeah. working in this, kind, yep. in this kind of dangerous, uh, uh, you know, situation, and you promise you know hospital is very important. Now somebody got hurt; they had to transport them to 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 Morovia. Liberia, Morovia is not Liberia. People are mining at least give them that 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 courtesy to get them, you know, some some accessible hospital, so that they can bring their family there. Come on, man. And, you know, we got people coming to our country and they take advantage of our people. And our government there remain mute. Uh, you know, uh, this is not the first time you're happening in Firestone. And then people go build makeshift shelter for people who are, who are giving you billions of dollars. Nobody benefiting here, but, but only those who come in and probably few government officials. I think uh, they should let out that double guy go. It should go. I mean, definitely... He has uh, outrun his course 12 years, man. He's not there for the anymore. He got no feeling for our people. But, but you know, Stanton, we we got we got a long way to go. And and I'm not, I really don't like the way how Grace Bay is proceeding. Uh, I only say it's your Lexington brother, man. Uh, it's not he's not doing well. Um, he's, from, he's from Greenville. Yeah, okay. It's what it's what Greenville. I heard names of the place in the in the in the apartment. He, he kinda like changed them at the end of the day and put some of the people there. Yeah. I don't no, know. I, I'm not gonna let's also going agree. I'm not gonna put that on Grace Bay. I may disagree uh on that note that anyone switching names. Uh, yeah. Listen, it's not Grace Bay, it's not Colonel Cry. I respect that. I don't think because those things are signed by the president. And, you know, no, the, the, the and, president and, signed and put the signature on top, under at the name. So, so I Grace understand Bay. it's happening out there, Madam Salim. So it's not that you know, then then the Senate blast. So the the, the old man will not be able to kill that. That's no. why you have seen again. Recall. Again, I would say on, on that note. On, on that note, I would say. You know, something is happening, but it's not about changing names on the appointments, right? Uh, people are very careful because the old man have frowned upon that. When he, 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 he's hearing you, that you're making those uh, accusations. Uh, but my thing with the Great Spirit Factor is like, the party folks themselves have felt within themselves that, you know, they are left out. I, I, I don't think, and here we are. This history behind Grace Bay that he was supporting Cummings. Uh, he's the Madame Salih boy, you know, guy. He's 75 years old. Uh, his relationship with Joseph Yuma Barker is a factor, of course. You know, we respect it. But I asked a direct hard question to Ambassador, and you heard how he answered the question. Knowing what we know today, if Joseph Barker ever going to say, I will make Grace Bay my, my, my chief of staff, a minister of state, he was going to lose this election. Seriously speaking, because even people within the party, they are mad. Why are you bringing grace for you? Say, yeah, that's my long time friend. I respect him. I trust him. But this is a collective effort of everyone that you bring in grace for that say he went to Ghana for an interim government. You bring in grace for that people say, well, grace for was supporting uh, that, that, that Mr. Comey's boy. Uh, people saying Mr. Comis, uh, you know, people going through Mr. Comis now to call Grace Bay and say, I need a job. And these are the kind of things that are coming up. We got one instance that a woman called and they say, go and call Mr. Comis. And when a woman called Mr. Comis, whether it's true or not, but I'm explaining it. And I will explain it better tomorrow because I'm gathering the information. Uh, Mr. Comis called Grace Bay. And Grace Bay said, send the person to me. So who hiring who? 
This making people so uncomfortable with the Grispy factor. Oh. But Joseph Baga said that my longtime friend, the president said with Ben C W A, that's my buddy buddy from Madam 72 of your government. I know him, I trust him. So be it. But if there's a problem for the government, then we need a solution. Because if Mr. Comis will be calling Grispy and telling Grispy, say, I got somebody that want a job, help them yeah. out. You know, you know, and and I, and, and, and I say we we'll come to you, my brother Isaac. And I think that's a problem, Conor Gray, because it's making people uncomfortable. Maybe President Barack not seeing it. President Barack thinking this is a ten years, twelve years, twenty years back when Conor Gray and myself were children. This is a new time, man. This is the guy that never supported you. You say, "Oh, the man was doing it by do." No, Grisman never supported you. Grace was in the fight. People that were in the fight right now, I can tell you, they are so mad. People say, man, maybe Grace will call the papa and hook the papa with some money. No. Man, Grace was open and said he was supposed to me. Someone knew that this shenanigans were the one that were going to show up at the end of uh, a communist uh, presidency. And, and more of those kinds of people that will come so, from nowhere. And, and we're going, and we're going to say this thing. thing. We're going to, I'm going to say it good because. I was able to gather the individual name that Grace Fair helped put through for that job. I want to respect them. And you know, whether he convinced just say he might work out for the job. But I don't know what agreement the president went through with Madame Sally. Maybe that's a factor. I don't know. And you know, but the fact is that if President Barker said, I trust Grace Fair, I want to work with Grace Fair, I make Grace Fair my minister of state, uh, then, then, then. A lot of people kind of like shaking, man. Uh, so, so, what's going on with this guy? I said, though, I know you're saying yeah, that. It's coming. Let's hear you out. Let's hear you, brother. Yeah, let, let me close. Let me close because we are so much tired with this blame game on other people. The day we begin to realize that the government is on the ambit of the president, the president only, maybe we will stop making the people be concerned as to who is actually running the government. Please, everything that happens under the government is the gov president's responsibility. Okay, great, great spirit change day. He bring this. It is a person responsibility to appoint whoever name there that is appointed. As far as we know, is the person that appoints the person. Great spirit, uh, you know, we 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 tired with this excuse on everybody. This is our country to, to, today. The country is overheating. A country is overheating. We are seeing suspicious houses burning every day and people lost in their lives here and there. Life bullet fly everywhere. Where is the rescue train? And I want to specifically go to the civil servants. I know this is not something people will be expecting, but I, I, I really wanted to say this. Listen, you civil servants, I wanted to talk to you very quickly. We can only talk as much as we can talk. One thing I was talking, assuring is that uh, we care for everyone, everyone, not just people who are seditions or people who support the CDC, every one of you. You voted for the rescue mission in anticipation that they will come and improve your lives. And of course, you were not wrong to do that because of all of the things they told you. How much they said they will do, they will do this, they will do. So I said, though, and, and, and I think, and, and, and I think Let me your, internet, your internet is having problems too. Uh, we no, it's not a big problem. Let me end. It's not a big problem. No, you mellow by post uh, uh, stentor. And you say you I said you right. went off. That's what no. I'm saying. No, but I'm I'm on. I'm on. People hear me all over. I know I'm on. Just leave my internet go through, please. So as I'll say, I know someone wants to take me to the back, but across ministries, <laughs> there are <laughs> massive methods, cancellations of contracts, demotion of people, recalling of people. And most of you affected today campaign and voted for the rescue mission instead of talking about increasing your salaries that they promise you. They, they are this your friends, your brothers, your sisters. Am I you? It may not be you today. You are not. Sure a salary. <laughs> when will you rise up, Silver Sevens? When will your voices be heard? When will you stand up? Elections have gone. This is not campaigning anymore. This is governance. Right in your eyes, your friends are being demoted, are being recalled, are being dismissed. You are not far from that. 
<laughs> you have to be there. If you think they are dismissing you to call you later, you are having a big dream. Listen, you play your part, civil servants, to ensure this government comes to power. I'm not sure you expected dismissals. Some of you voted for the government. How are your friends mocking you for All being right, dismissed? So I, said, go now. I know you eat you got to give your friend a chance to talk. I'm closing. You're high all of the time. No, you have the time to close. Don't do this, though. No, I'm I not do this. You I have know all the time to close. At Ministry of Health, we are getting too much of embarrassing issues at Ministry of Health. And I know tomorrow we're talking more. Where people are being recalled, people are being changed, breaking in friends, having gossip here and there. These no, are not being respected. Tomorrow we're talking about Ministry of Health. So yeah, there's a ask, Let me ask you a question, Thank my brother. I'm, let me gone, ask I'm, you. Gone, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> my internet bar, I'm gone. <laughs> you see what I mean, do? You run away, Colonel Gray. Colonel Gray, the man running away. <laughs> but you know, let me say this, folks. No, but as well, always, we come well, on I the show. Exactly we come the the I said, having some point. I said, making some good point. Oh, okay, okay, I said, can you mute yourself? No, Is that you, Colonel Gray? Oh, that's you? My okay. Internet. So as I'm making some very, very good point, yeah, I should say this. And that's what I like about Spoon, because we, we, we don't come and just agree with everything. But I do believe there's still hope. You know, you can get discouraged right now, but there's still hope. We can get, we can be mad though, but there's still hope. We just have to tell it as it is going to great. You know, I, I think people expect to, let me tell you, let me tell you this. During the election, right? During the campaign season, President Walker has a certain group of people that used to meet every 7 p.m. Colonel Gray, you're a military man. You know how important those kind of evening meeting where you compare notes and go over the, 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 you know, the plan for the day. Every 7 p.m., almost 6 to 8, I'm not going to call their name. They will meet. They will discuss the issue. And, you know, they will put things in place. And these kind of mistakes was never happening. Because he knew them, kind of great, and they know him. They are raw politicians on the street. There were certain things in place. Before the press release kind of people understand. Can I start calling, calling some names? I saw you, librarian people go and ask them, where is Clarence Massacre, the former representative? Where is he? I'm not talking about give them job, but I'm asking, where is Clarence Massacre? Samuka name is still out there. Where is Brian Samuka? Where is Jacob Akodi? And I continue to name those people that were there, that were directly involved in that 7 p.m. meeting, that were shipping things. The very ambassador Balu that you see here. I know he's not mad, he's a diplomat, he will be very decent. Let's go back and just find them. People that were addressing the issue, and you know. The, what making us mad? You have folks around Jose Yuma Barker giving CDC reason to celebrate. And you know why? They allow President Barker to leave the country, whether by the Ghana jet or the CDC private jet. We know that was the Ghana jet, and you know, military Navy jet, uh, quietly, secretly. Colonel Gray, these are questions that people need to ask. Why will a Sylvester Grisby allow that to happen? Even when the president says, I want to go, you ask questions, you put things in place. Under this group, where you get Samuel Kofi Woods, Samuka, and you know, Brian, uh, Brian Samuka, Clarence Masterquad, Jacob Akori, uh, Steve Zago, uh, Prince Moi, you know, all these guys, that, even Yumbly. The only person I have followed that group, I can tell you, was uh, DeLong. They don't always fire away from that group. Where you get Jeremiah Kuhn? The guys that used to meet and, and, and decide and discuss the issue. What's that group? That inner cycle. 
immediately after the presidency, boop. And that's why we are in where we are today. And that's the problem. And that's why things are going down. You can ask for the main rescue members that Yomri was so comfortable with that they can call the lawn in the evening and everybody had the same one, one saying across the board and presenting document to President Buaka. People wasn't sleeping. Should we write a book on these things? So when we, when we sit back, <clears throat> we go ahead and say the fact. Don't tell me say to go in the corner and say it. No. Because it will not help our country. The people that are targeting these things say, listen, this is our people. Now, we're not talking about the inner cycle. Sir Johnny, Charles Nutter, Kessely. These people are advising on the broad base. We yet we seen this. Let them do this. But come on, man. It's a conflict, bro. That's a conflict. You know, and people may not like this thing, but there's a conflict because we have to say it. You know, till we can go back on the drawing board and then readdress this issue and redesign, and, you know, and bring things back. You know, uh, we, we still have hope. Uh, but as I say, there's always hope for the hopeless. Uh, you know, things are things are not. You know, when you speak to some of these folks, they are down. Can you imagine people are making appointments to see Jose Iman Buaka now? People from this group, they have to wait online. They have to make appointment. Those people that, that 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 will walk in there and just discuss issue concerning Liberia. That when they put a suggestion forth, guess what happened? Somebody will remove the suggestion and say, "Do it this way." We suggest you to do it this way. You know, Stendhal will never, ever, will fight to the end. Uh, but if we cannot recalibrate, go into two months, it will be very, very detrimental. It will be bad for us all. I'm calling their names. If you know them, go ask them. Ask them why are they. Ask them what's the problem. Ask them why they are not advancing. Ask them why they are outside of the, of the bubble. Ask them. We know too much, folks. And we need to speak up. When Monica Tink can leave from in there and tell you, the president say, I met the president, the president say, you okay with me? That's trouble. The issue at the mountain today in Kipma, that's trouble. Everybody overplaying their hand. So if you want to say it's okay to each his own, to each his own, but I know, I know that it's not. We said 17, 18 days, the Army Wife investigation, we still wait for the report. The tenure thing came about, under the bad advice, no due diligence can agree. We're removing people from tenure. Guess what? Supreme Court put it on hold today. Supreme Court said we're still within. I think judgment. the rescue revolution has been hijacked, my brother. We are not. We are not moving forward because we don't have anybody from the Justice Department today. Today it's on the newspaper because the appointment to meet people in Chimoy was today. So the tenure thing is just up and down. And, you know, and people say, but we're not stand on. We be quiet, but it's small. Be quiet, be quiet will cause a, a problem. You know, you know, people not speaking up because they are in the government. So since we are not in the government, let's speak up. It will help to change course. And that's all I have to say. Tomorrow will be a powerful show. We have Francis Dobo coming, the senator. And uh, we're holding responsible for some of these things and ask him to explain to the Liberian people what's going on. Every day is important in the life of Liberia. Every day. Don't say it's just one day, it's just two days, it's just three days. Every day is important. Every day we should hold the government responsible. Every day we should hold our nation, the leaders responsible. Every day we should question. Colonel Gray, you can leave. I will, I will hang out with my piggy. I know you are very basic. Thank you. Every day, Nelson, we should hold people responsible because 
it is our right to do so. There's no more guns, there's no more bullets. We should use our medium, we should use every way, every which way to speak truth to power. It, it, it doesn't look good. People are afraid to talk. Jawaya town, a lot of people will be talking secret. The camera they will be scared. And Jawaya not losing the election. We need to change goals. Today, an emergency meeting will call all the ministers that went there. And they came out and said, well, we send people to Grand Cape Man. Listen, then what? You're called money captain. The president will meet with money captain and his team. Then why? Are you still not in darkness today? Have the government spoken on the issue of LDC? Have this president said, I will keep money captain on X, Y, and Z? Let's talk about the issue. The position of the government on the tenure issue is what? Freeport, both members say they own tenure. EPA say they own tenure. Fishery, tenure. NRF, National Road Fund, tenure. Ladry, tenure. Marita, tenure. Uh, just call the name. LACC, tenure. CBL, tenure. National Election Commission, tenure. Let's name them. <laughs> Everybody, the whole government will be on tenure. Everybody will be on tenure. So you will clear all of them and bring in new people and give them millions of dollars. So I want you to understand, let's start counting every area that have tenure. The people from the Freeport, the board members say they're on tenure according to the act, right? EPA, where yeah. Winston Tapper came from. He's on tenure. They still owe him almost four years. LRA, Gabriel, they're on tenure. Montgomery, then they're on tenure. That's three, right? Emma Glasgow, Fishery, that four. National Road Fund, Josita Winton, that five. Central Bank, that's six. National Election Commission, that's seven. Social Security, that eight. NASCO, that nine. Uh, okay, okay, let's just put yeah, them na, na, NASCO, na, yeah, NASCO, it, it's NASCO. Like na, National yeah. Social Security and Welfare yeah, Corporation, Social Security that's NASCO. 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 Then yeah. National Election, na, National Lottery, right? Okay, yeah. So, LACC, right? This mm -hmm. person from FIU, GSC as well, GSC, FIU, let's name them. You're talking about almost 50, 60 entity out there on tenure. Not only one individual, but you get three, four, five of them. So here we are, though. You're going to take every one of them out. No, no, no. You see, you know what? Some of them, they are constitutionally bound. Maybe three or four. The rest of them, you get rid of them. Who is advising the president? You should have done the investigation, come up with a plan, address the issue quietly, and then move in. But now it's... So now so you're on tenure too, a spoon, for four years, right? <laughs> I will slap the beginning. <laughs> tenure. <laughs> Private sector don't get time for tenure. No, it's not that. Then you go tell to do that you own tenure. <laughs> no, but open a full line. I, I beg to have maybe 10 more minutes of your time. Open a full line. Then people need to know everywhere in Liberia that have tenure. I said, Doki, okay, you help us. But man, go put your generator on, man. Don't do this to us. Yeah, I try. But before I go quick, and you know what? Interesting, though. But I said, put a generator on and come by by. We still get yeah, 10 more minutes. Man. You know what is interesting now? What? All of that turning to you talk about it happened on um, President Baraka. President Baraka was sitting in a chair when everything was being passed. Everything you talk about today. So that the funny thing, so that we go to a camera chair that will come out. Yeah, yeah I beg you. I beg you go. But it is important, right, for us to understand, folks. Nelson, open the phone line. 
Let's say I know I into your time and all your people that I can see, then they can get fair with me. But we need to we need to hear this and hear this now. How many folks on tenure position in Liberia? How many are they? Who advised the president to go ahead and say we we'll remove them without having some you know better background understanding? How many people on tenure position? So, like we will always say, Nelson, it would be good for us, good for the country. So we want to ask you, if you know this tenure thing, help us understand now, how many entity out there got tenure? Nelson, before I say they'll come back, let's go, hello, we even name LTA. LRA, Liberal Revenue Authority, LTA, Liberal Telecommunication Authority, Liberal Maritime, that's three, right? I mean, yeah. that's in front This thing, the, the, it, the, the, that's a small area here, man. Everybody is on tenure in Liberia. Mo Ali will soon get on tenure too. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, my position the current government should have gone in the back and negotiate with all these people make sure they have crossed all the t's and dug all the i's then they can come back and make that announcement about removing them that would, that would have been the best thing to do you know, but you got all the tenure complication now. You know, we can get time. We got to move on. We got to run the government. But it, it go back to who are advising the president. Or who is advising the president currently on this issue? And that's why actually I speak these things because I know. I know what I know. So, Nelson, uh, Spoon, Spoon Network at tenure, right? <laughs> <laughs> we get we get legislature as well. <laughs> Woo. How many years do you guys have? Uh, no man, for right. Everybody get tenure, man. And you know, it, it just it doesn't look right though. Yeah. It doesn't look right, seriously speaking. Seriously speaking, if if you go back in, in the days, you will understand that for Liberia. Let me take this call. Hello, your name and where you calling from? Standard. Yes, sir. My name is Jay Numa Docker. Uh, that's when the tenant positions, my advice to the government of Liberia is, so there's a clause in the, uh, the code of conduct. And when you are found guilty of certain misconduct, you can be fired. All you need to do, all the tenure guys, if there is a new government, institute an audit, you'll find them, you'll find them wanting. With that, you, you remove them easily. You need to pay nobody. But they, they, they be found guilty. All those that are running campaign, running paraphernalia for parties, you use those ones. But in 1985, some of those, after the field coup, the combat coup, they, they use a video. So you use a video to, to, to judge them. They say, you can prove it, you can prove it. You're running campaign. So okay, but thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. We appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so <laughs> I love when people <laughs> I love when people start to find their own. You know what they say? They said mm. Nelson is on tenure for three years. <laughs> 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 oh man. <laughs> but then, then, then we go, then we go, Nelson. Uh, then wait for Acid, though. He's coming back. Uh, you know what? We shouldn't wait for Acid, though, because he comes and start talking Tabata. Okay, I said, well, generator, I come here, Jay. Now, it may not even get few. <laughs> Nothing in hell, but Joe, we're back in the country. Joe, we're still get Acid, though, few money. No, 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 you still get Acid, though, gas slip. And nobody used to get that few slip, right? Yeah, yeah. I, is it true that Mosekato is still the spokesperson for Liberia National Police? 
Yeah, because uh, so far there hasn't been any any um any change in that position yet. Uh, so he will remain the spokesman until another person can uh, take his place. So I know he praying yeah. that nobody should take his place. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Was it kind of a man? Let me leave him alone. <laughs> 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 my man, let me leave him alone. But I think he prayed that nobody should take his place. Yeah, but I think he position, so no the man got tenure. Where were you? Any <laughs> <laughs> position? No. But Chris if I... Moses is on tenure. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh Who's Yonton was the shortest serving um police postman? I think I think I think I think the president should put Woos Nelton back. I like mm. I like the Woods Nelton. I like he did well, but he was kicked out by Emmanuel Porter. Emmanuel Porter kicked Woods Nelton out. And uh, but again, let, let's say this. If you you know for the spoon you understand where we are a lot of stuff we need to correct to make the government better can we can this government be better yes yes we can yes we can yes we can but can we all do it together yes so you need to speak i need to speak in a which way to make the government better nelson uh, as it do, he stayed there. He's trying to come on. Let's give him a few more seconds. If not, you got to do your show. It's 8.30. What? It's one thirty on your side, right? 8.28. Yeah. That would be one twenty-eight. And yeah. all your guys are getting ready to come on. What's your... What was... Uh... Okay. What we have for tonight? Yeah. Yeah, so the... Uh... You remember this, this fellow who uh, intruded in the uh president's uh, security yeah that began yeah um we thought to have him tonight there are some issues uh, uh following the situation there was an investigation launched by the police they invited him um and they asked him some questions but there are some updates with respect to what's happening even after that investigation now there are some things he wants to speak out on, and, uh, and he read a, he read a, he read a talk that. Yeah, I heard something which I cannot confirm, but I don't want to say on the show. But let me leave you with this: the first group of EPS guys that were around the old man, mm -hmm. they intentionally allow him to come through. Okay, and and um, maybe he may not be aware, but. Uh, I like the fact that Sam Gay went out and tried to in-service all of them. <clears throat> and these, these are the concerns uh, that you have some folks around the old man that need to, need to, that they need to remove and remove immediately some of the security folks around the old man. I think Sam Gay, the uh, EPS director, have done it. Uh, and it's very scary. Uh, you have some of them around President Buaka that carry information, called other folks and, uh, um and and say all kind of stuff as to the activities of jose yaman Waka. and that's very very yeah. scary yeah that's very very scary some of them you know the kimba way once they got sea breeze brought them and they just make that quick switch so i mean they are loyal to who they are loyal to but uh sam gate is cleaning house <clears throat> sam gate is doing everything he can to make sure that the right people uh, that is soon to secrecy and protecting the first family uh, you know, that they can be around the old man. But that was very scary. And I hope you guys can ask him uh, some serious, serious question. You know, once this thing happened, we got to keep our eyes because the protection of the first family is a paramount concern for any yeah. nation. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Nelson. Uh, I beg to leave you. I know you're so boring and tired. I cook Edo soup. I want to go eat some uh, Edo and plenty soup. Nelson, have you tried before? The plenty no, of that, that 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 green plenty, right? And that green no, plenty. No, no, red plenty, red plenty. Uh, and I, I like I like red plenty. Yeah, red like plenty. And, and you cook it soup with a lot of pepper with dry chicken, 
Drop point. <laughs> drop chicken. <laughs> drop point fish. Everybody drop point. <laughs> yeah, you break. You gotta take the bones for the body though, and you just put them, put them, blam, 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 blam. Just put them inside, blam, 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 blam. You know that just be quite a lot. Don't put nothing fresh. No fresh meat, nothing. Everything dried. No meat as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know when you pour it inside, really, you, either you enjoy. It. So I mean, I'm gonna send some to you. Try, okay? But how you send it? <laughs> I'm <in> Bob, <laughs> uh, well, folks, again, we want to say thank you for being here with us tonight. Uh, this is Spoon Talk, man. We appreciate all of you for um, always uh, sharing your time with us. Thanks for um, making up time to be here every single day. As you know, Spoon Talk is where you get um, all the latest information. The happiness in the country will bring you up to speed every single day. And I want to say thanks to thousands of you in Radio Lane who charge your battery every single day, catching us on several frequencies across the country. We appreciate you for that. Thanks to our partner radio stations across Liberia, um, Trend Radio 104.7 in Grand Cru County, Gibi FM 90.9 90 .9 in Kakatama, Gibi County, Thanks to Trust FM 88.7 in Bomi County. And of course, uh, Punch 106.7 here in Monrovia. We've been live across the Spoon Network as well. Um, Spoon 107.5 FM, Fabric 101.1, and uh, Super 95.5 FM. And uh, to our online audience, many thanks to all of you. Yes, um, you're on YouTube, uh, Spoon Talk Live. Uh, Facebook, Spoon TV, Fabric TV, and Super TV. We appreciate all of you. We'll be here tomorrow with another edition of Spoon Talk. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be another great show. Um, you can make up time to join us tomorrow. Until then, have a good night. Um, Abraham Walker, Yaman Thompson, uh, Chris Perry, Dr. Kelvin, Jason, Yes, Dr. Kelvin, thanks for being here tonight. Mohammed A. Sharif, my own sister, Sherry Snen, Joyce Dillon, Florence Bokar, Natania, Natania Bernard. Thanks to all of you for making up time to be here tonight. Spoon Talk will be back on your radio tomorrow. Coming up shortly is the late night show, the late night politics on Spoon. You don't want to miss it. You can make up time to join us. Until then, have a good night. My name is Nelson Collet. Liberia is all we have, so let's remember to keep the peace. Happy birthday uh, to all the folks in February. Um, those of you who were born February 29th, you celebrate your birthday only in Libya. You celebrate your birthday once after every two years. Let me say happy birthday in a special way to all the February 29th born, those people who were born the 29th of February. Um, happy birthday to you, yeah? Celebrate well because it's going to be after two years before you celebrate another birthday. So, uh, yes, folks, let's hope you can join us on the late night show shortly. It's going to be great. A whole lot to talk about and so much... So much information coming your way very shortly. Bye bye. And your boy, right in the south, man.